The American Sports Network is proud to present college football, and today we welcome you to the campus of Eastern Michigan University in Ypsilanti and to Rynearson Stadium, otherwise known and affectionately known as the Factory, where today we have two teams that are clocking in, the Monarchs of Old Dominion and the Eagles of Eastern Michigan. With Rich Baldinger, I'm Dave Armstrong. Glad to have you with us, and Rich, I'm excited. You're excited. Oh, I'm ready to go. Coaches are excited. Fans are excited. How do the players feel? Well, I'm going to tell you what, Dave. I can't move very well anymore, but when I walked down on the field today and watched them in warm-ups, I was ready to get out with them right now, the players. This is where you set the tempo. You've been working on it all camp. You start your season. How does it look? Well, you start right now. Well, we at ASN are very happy to welcome in the MAC Conference. We've also done Conference USA. This is our second year with them, and that includes Old Dominion. The Monarchs come in off a 6-6 six and six season, but they have a changing of the guard. No longer do they have Taylor Heineke, who has been a four-year starter starter for Old Dominion. Yeah, Taylor Heineke up at the Minnesota Vikings right now, hopefully still throwing the football around up there in the field. But we saw a gentleman where the team last year, when he got in trouble, they looked at Taylor. They said, bail us out. Well, let me tell you, this young man did it. A phenomenal quarterback. Get outside the pocket, and inside the pocket, throw the ball all over the field. So now ODU turns to a freshman. They want to drive a Bentley, Schuler Bentley. Oh, they've got a Bentley. Yes, they do. And folks, let me say something now to you. He is a pocket quarterback. Yes, a pocket quarterback. It does still exist in college football. Got to protect the young man. I know as a former lineman, I'd always tell him, you know what, you better learn how to run because there could be days that maybe I'm not perfect. But this is young man had a great high school career, look for good things in college. Nobody had to teach the Eastern Michigan quarterback Ooh. how to run. Reggie Bell, he's a dual threat. I tried to catch him during warm-ups. <laughs> Didn't do very well. You're exactly right. I'll tell you what, nobody better than running the zone read. Talking with the coaches of Old Dominion, they said, yes, he can throw the football well, but I'll tell you what, he's got a pair of Porsches on those feet. He will take off and get to the corner. You've got to make sure you're in position, staying contained, because Mr. Reginald Bell, he'll be ringing the bell as he runs by you. Well, we've got Porsches, we've got Bentleys, only fitting here in the Motor City, and we'll see what happens. As the American Sports Network, so excited to have college football back for another season. The American Sports Network is the destination for sports fans to be inspired and entertained. Behind the scenes access, connecting you with your favorite teams. Insightful features, get to know players and coaches beyond the bright lights of competition. Highlights and analysis from the game's top experts. Here comes Medley. Medley into the end zone. The screen pass. Right now. He's free. Wow. Into the end zone. And it is caught for the touchdown. Connecting the community, one play at a time. The American Sports Network. Your team, your passion, your network. And we at ASN still so proud to break down some different walls and some different barriers as we welcome the Mac to 2015 college football. So pleased to welcome in this conference and these players and these coaches as you're looking at Eastern Michigan, you're looking at Chris Creighton at Eastern Michigan, a guy that is now in just his second year coming off a 2-10 and ten season rebuilding this program with the Eagles. So Chris Creighton comes in and a great track record. And you look at Bobby Wilder, talk about great track record, a guy who has built this program. It's only in its seventh year, six years at Old Dominion so far, and he has done nothing short of a remarkable job, Baldy. This is a guy who has guided the winningest startup program in the history of college football. Simply amazing going from FCS to FBS. And I'll tell you what, though, he sits in a hotbed of recruiting down there in the Hampton Roads, Suffolk, Virginia area. I'll tell you, he has got a plethora of athletes coming to him every year. 
We're going to give you the injury report now, brought to you by Bon Secours Orthopedic Institute. Good help for everything that moves you. We do not get an injury report officially from the Eagles, but for Old Dominion, not one but two tight ends out. Melvin Vaughn lost for the year to a knee injury, and Adam Swan, who is out with a broken leg. So they lo lose their top two tight ends, and that's a big blow for Bobby Wilder and these Monarchs. We can report that Pat O'Connor, he has lost for the season as well, a defensive tackle that was pre-Mac. Look at some of the keys of the game, Baldy. Let's check that out. Brought to you by Checkered Flag, where winners buy. That's what I always like to hear. Let's start with just keys of the game for ODU. It's all about creating turnovers on defense. You talk with coaches. And then, of course, you've got a freshman quarterback. But guess what? As a lineman, I'm going to tell you, there's no time to be a freshman. You've got to be a senior. <laughs> for Eastern Michigan, it's about pressuring the quarterback. I don't care what anybody says. You've got a freshman. You've got to send the house at him. And offensively, ring the bell. Reggie Bell, we know what he can do running the football. Let's see if he can do take care of the football today on both offense, running it, and throwing it. Chris Creighton's team will kick off to begin this game. And we'll be looking at Shuler Bentley here in just a second. Pocket quarterback. I like to talk about it. We just don't see that anymore. You know, standing there, looking the field, putting it all over the place. But losing his number one tight end probably doesn't make him feel very good. Low kick, heading toward the end zone and then through the back of the end zone. Good kick for the Eagles. And that'll set the Monarchs up. So again, when you look at the Monarchs offensively, Taylor Heineke, what more could he have done for you than what he did? 3,476 passing yards just last year with 30 touchdowns. But now Heineke, he's gone to the Minnesota Vikings. And in his place, Schuler Bentley. Bentley, a redshirt freshman. And the quarterback scouting report is brought to you by Coke Industries. Yeah, just our two-time player of the year, South Carolina. Asked Coach, though, the one thing he liked about it is he understands protection, knows where the blitz is coming from. Let's see how he handles it this afternoon. The handoff to Ray Lowry, one of the focuses for the Eagles. Stop that run and force Bentley to be a drop-back quarterback. And the stop in there by Derek Williams, the linebacker. We're going to see a lot of great eBay as well. And Anthony Zappone, maybe one of the best linebacking cores in the MAC. Yeah, eBay actually was in on that play. Nice job beating the double team, actually getting in and grabbing an ankle. Little play action pass comes to the outside. That's Little. Bubble screen, nice. And Little takes it up to the 36. Good for a first down. Yes, yeah, some nice blocks on the outside. Jonathan Duhart there, number nine. Key block on the outside on that little tunnel screen. Coming back inside. That's the way he gets your quarterback comfortable. Shuler Bentley, give him some short throws. Let him get in the rhythm. Bentley, a guy that averaged better than 60% as a passer in high school. High snap, and he's got to eat it. Got to eat it, Dave, but I'll tell you what. He controlled the snap. Didn't fumble it. Again, you say, well, but that's, a, a, okay, he's a redshirt freshman. Had a year last year, sitting on the bench, studying Taylor Heineke, what he did, but nice job there by Schluter Bentley. Ball was a high snap, able to contain it, control it. Okay, you got sacked, but at least you didn't fumble the football. Luke McLean was in there to clean that play up. So a loss of a couple, second and 12. Again, Bentley back to throw, and again, Little is his target. He's hit immediately after the throw. Good play defensively by Ray Tillman, but a nice gain out to the 43. Nice job of setting his feet. We talked about Shula Bentley being a pocket quarterback. Asked Coach that he can make throws all over the field. Doesn't get rattled. That's the way to distribute the ball on the outside. Again, get your quarterback in a rhythm. Get him comfortable. He'll make plays. Hurry up offense. Third and three. Three for three through the air. A catch and then a fumble by Lowry and no first down. In fact, they'll call it incomplete. Yeah, it was. I thought he made actually two steps on that play. I thought he took two steps with the ball. So that's why I wonder they called it incomplete. I thought he made a football move, but anyways, not enough for the first down. Brought the ball out to midfield. Let your punt team now put it in the corner. Well, let's see. After the catch, does he make a move? I pretty, think so. I thought he had control of the football pretty well. Ball got kicked out. Really didn't matter in yep. where he, the I ball was downed or anything like that. It might have lost another half yard, but no big deal. No, 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 no
from Servi. Fair catch called for, and then there's going to be a penalty for roughing the receiver here. And this is one of the things, you, we, we talk with coaches, they always say, well, it's the opening game. We're not sure what to expect, especially in special teams, because you just don't quite have the same amount of time in practice to work on it. But those are the little things that can prove costly for you in opening game. Now you're going to give them extra yards. You don't want to do that to this offense led by Reggie Bell. So let's take another look at the hit by Vincent Lowe after the fair catch signal had gone up. It was, and again, you just got to be able to break down coming down. You see that? You're beating you on the outside, but you've got to stay in control. You work on that all the time, always breaking down. So again, no reason for it, but it did happen. Let's see what they can do defensively here now. Baldy, the worst part of that penalty is field position. Exactly. Move them out to the 30-yard line. The quarterback wow. keeper. Bell with all kinds of room to run. Almost to midfield. Well, let's check out the scouting report on Reggie Bell, brought to you by Coke Industries. Yeah, we, we had a chance to watch him warm up. All the throws aren't perfect, but the one thing today that all the coaches talk about is ball security. That's been his issue. Does he improve from the get-go? Now to the outside. Good run by Blake Bannum. And a little fly sweep coming underneath that. Nice job by quarterback that time on that toss. Believe me, you, you work on that play on that fly sweep. Just that little pitch like that, Dave, he's got to be perfect. Or else if it isn't, it's going to be an ugly play. I always think something like that should almost be a completed pass. And that is a completed pass. And they'll move the chains again. Another good Throw and catch, this one by Chris Strange, and look at the Eagles move into Monarch territory. Yeah, hurry up offense, high good tonight. Let's get set, get to the line of scrimmage. Reginald Bell right now doing a nice job, Reggie, in terms of getting people where they need to be lined up, delivering the ball on the money. This time nice to give is to the tailback, and a good cut. And all the way to the house, Darius Jackson. Wow, DJ doing it. What a cut in the backfield. And that, I'll tell you what, he turned that on a dime. And that's the reason why he got upfield, got underneath the defense. It was a zone defense that time. And for Old Dominion, stopping the run was an issue. Today, not much luck in the first drive. Take a look at it. Here's look, you see the fake of the fly sweep. It caused the defense to kind of rotate. And then coming back underneath, you said it, Darius Jackson. Great job of getting that right foot in the ground and then getting upfield. Well, that's the exact way you want to start from a 2-10 and 10 season. You get this season kick-started in a hurry. They march right down the field. A 36-yard touchdown run from Darius Jackson completes a four-play, 68-yard drive. It took just over a minute. Wow, Darius Jackson electrifies this crowd here in Ypsilanti. Hey, I'll tell you what, he came to the factory today and he prepared a few bolts in his here at Eastern Michigan as the Eagles take it right down the field and Darius Jackson takes it in from 36 yards out for the score to cap off a 68-yard drive. Yeah, it did. And again, you got to give quarterback Bell so much credit because his ability to break contain defensively, you've got to stay in position. you got to play for the edge. Now you can come back inside with those tailbacks. Short trap on that play. So now really puts the linebackers in a bind. Do I flow quickly or do I delay a little bit? Another low kick. This one angling for the corner of the end zone to be down there. And Old Dominion, let's see if they can get something going. You can't put it on Schuler Bentley because he was pretty good in that first drive. But let's go back to that touchdown run from Darius Jackson. Yeah, just look out Darius Jackson. Nice job in terms of watch the short trap. Again, left guard pulling. Nice job. Just the kick out block is enough. That's all you need pulling that time. That was Thornton that time. Coming across, sustained. Darius Jackson, nice patience. Got right outside his guard, and again, you see defense got tied up in the middle, opened up the crease for the running back. Well, last year, the Eagles lost to the Monarchs 17 to 3, so they've already scored last year's output. And this one is picked off! And that was, was that Adam Kurt, number 43? I think he tipped the ball. 
the middle linebacker. Take a look at it, Dave. Watch this ball delivered by Bentley. That ball, yeah, it was. 43, Hurd tipped it a little bit, and it caused it no chance on the reception that time. DeHart, he could have had it. It was through his hands, and then Juan Geraldo with the interception. His opponent, excuse me, on that was the one who had to tip. So that one, as you're looking at Schuler Bentley, he's got to shake that off. That's not his fault. No, it wasn't. It was nice. His opponent that time just got that left hand up that time, and he was the reason why that ball got tipped and the reason why it got intercepted. But again, you like the way I like what I saw in terms of delivering the football, where the ball was held, how high the elbow is up, and everything. But again, got to be careful. Linebackers are flowing. Well, you have to also be impressed with Geraldo, the safety, because his first job is containment, and then all of a sudden, after the tip, he makes a quick reaction and comes up with the interception. And again, and that's all because you're now what Shula Bentley's going to understand is that in this level. The speed of the game. Every time you go to the next level, the speed of the game, and you're going to find out linebackers are going to be able to get back so much quicker and change directions that time. So, Pone, nice job of getting that right hand up, and he's the one who caused that tip on the ball. Now, this interception takes place. So, quarterback now reading it, now you've got to adjust your game to that. So, that was tipped and then tipped? Yes, it was. It was tipped twice, I thought. Okay. And there, but now did that ball hit the ground right here? I'm just wondering, did he hit? Looks like there's an official review here. Yes, it is. And I think this ball hit the ground. Hands were not underneath it. So they are under an official review now. Take a look in at the it. replay booth. Right here, Dave. I'll see if you can see. Let's take a look right. I thought the tip of the ball Maybe. touched before he had control of the football. Geraldo came up with it, but now they're looking to see where the tip of the ball is, and certainly Jonathan Duhart is hoping this gets overturned. So right now, referee Rodney Burnett, he's talking with his replay official, Jerry Bram, to see if they're going to overturn this call or not. Again, the call on the field is an interception. So they have to have the irrefutable evidence. evidence. Yep. And, and I think right here is where I see the ball tip before he got it. It's hard to say, though, if he didn't have control. So it is an incomplete pass. The ruling on the field is overturned and an incomplete pass. I think you're right, Baldy. The, tip of that ball might yep. have just caught a piece of that gray turf. You're exactly right on that one, and it did come in underneath. Great play that time by Geraldo. Tried to get his hands underneath it, just couldn't quite do it. But the ball, ball, just the tip of the ball, touched that field before. So a little breath of fresh air for Schuler Bentley and this Monarch offense as they go back to work second and ten. Big hole this time for Lowry, and he's got a first down. Yeah, running behind Tyler Fisher that time, just on a little straight lead play that time. Nice job at a left guard, number 70, Fisher, 317 pounds. Getting a good job to the second level, Lowry, just hitting it downfield. Lowry, the freshman of the year in CUSA last year, gaining almost 1,000 yards. He rushed for 947, which is an Old Dominion record. A record that I think he'll break this year. And there's four more. And right now, defensively here for Eastern Michigan, they've gone to an odd man front, which means you've got a nose tackle in the middle. And you can see right now the adjustment that Old Dominion's made. They said, well, if you're going to play that 30 front, we're just going to go ahead and pound that rock inside. Now here, Eastern Michigan going back to a regular even front. Pressure coming from the outside, the pass on target to Marquise Little. Hit right after the catch. But that's another first down for the Monarchs. Yeah, just take a look at Shula Bentley in the pocket. We talked about this. Let's watch him set up and deliver the ball. Good job of looking down the field. That's where you like to see the delivery. And again, you like that. He had a hand in the face, but still had the presence of mind to deliver the ball outside on the money. Well, he's a coach's kid. His dad, Bobby, was his high school coach. And Bobby Bentley is now an assistant with Auburn. 
There goes Lowry again. Scoots out of bounds just past midfield at the 49. Yeah, Lowry, I'll tell you what, great vision on his part. He thought that play was going to come up inside the A gap, and he just stopped. His motion, forward motion, just bounces back out to the left side. So again, being in position and talking to the coaches of Eastern Michigan, they said that was the biggest issue, being out of position. Cost you gave up so many big runs last year. You know, that big game against Florida Atlantic last year, over 200 yards. They're just in nickel defense right now here at Eastern Michigan. See if the old man continues to run the ball. Play action. And this one is thrown up for grabs and thrown out of bounds. Yeah, great pressure up front that time. Defensively by Eastern Michigan on the play. At 93, Derek Dunlap, he's the one who got in the backfield and really altered Schuler's throw that time. There's a flag down. Pass interference on the defense on what was really an uncatchable ball, a ball thrown out of bounds. And again, great job defensively up front, pressure on the quarterback, forced him to just kind of toss it up in the air. And you're right, I didn't think that ball was catchable, so I'm not sure how they decided that they would go ahead and call interference on that. Well, they did. 34-yard line is where they moved the ball. The Monarchs are in business. They thought they had turned it over on an interception, and since then, they're moving it well. Lowry again, this time hit pretty much right at the line. He'll fall forward for a couple of yards. Yeah, and the thing is, though, but his name doesn't go on his stats, but Luke McLean, number eight that time, beat the tackle across his face. He was one who made penetration. Now you distort the timing of the play. No chance for any cutback lane. So on the back side, you only zone blocks. you got to make sure you get your footwork. Everybody's on the same page. Know your assignment. You can see Bentley changing the call at the line, making sure the blocking assignments are right. Back to that staggered front, and now a timeout. Timeout taken by the Eagles. Yeah, they try to get Figueroa over on the nose. They feel like his comfort level rushing the passer from there is where he's most effective. So with Oldham Eagles, as Eastern Michigan took it right down the field, the Monarchs are trying to answer in their second possession of the game. Second down, nine yards to go. And the give again is to Lowry, and they're really bottling things up inside. All of a sudden, what's the difference, Baldy? Well, right now, right defense end, Jeremiah Harris, nice job working against the left tackle that time in terms of shed blocks. But in the middle, you know, talking with coaches this week, Kwani Figueroa, number 97, guy who can make some plays. I'll tell you what, tying things up, and now let's see how he rushes the pass. He's a true freshman. He has got some quickness to him. Third and ten. Bentley, given time, batted down at the line, incomplete. Great job again by Big Row. Just talking about number 97. Good job on the bull rush that time, working against 63. Clark in the middle, got the push, but watch him get his hands up, his left hand up, just when times it. Again, look at the move, now the bull rush, and again, he finds the football. Great job of elevate when he has to, but that's all set up because why? Separation from the center because you got the locked out arms. Now you can get find of where the quarterback's at, tip the ball on the play. Good defensive stand for the Eagles, and that'll force the Monarchs to punt. Creel is standing at his own 10-yard line. This will be a little pooch punt. Trying to angle it, and that hit right on the goal line and then into the end zone. Boy, that was just inches away from being perfect. Fell into the gray matter and then into the green soup. This field is something else. We walked down in the field. It did have play some tricks on your eyes. Yeah, absolutely. The gray field, we'll talk more about that in a second. But, Baldy, you were a student once upon a time at Wake Forest. And wow. What could you use when you're a student? Always a little extra money, right? Well, well I can use some now. How about that? Uh, how about that? Well, you can create the ASN mascot. Winning design gets $1,500. Check out americansportsnet.com for more details. And yeah, this gray field, they call it the parking lot here at the factory. And it was all designed, really, by Chris Creighton. When they came in, one of the practices during the winter, it was very cold, and they challenged the players to go outside and practice rather than in the bubble. And that's when they sort of really got into this whole thing about we're a workman-like team. You know, one of the quotes that I love 
from Eastern Michigan is our colors are green and white, but our collars are blue. And they are blue collar, and I'll tell you what, you've got the attitude, of, when you speak with Coach Creighton, there's conviction, there's passion, and there's authority in his voice. Players are responding to it. They sure are. He said, we met them where they were, and where they were was going nowhere fast. This time, Shaq Van, a redshirt freshman, he is hauled down behind the line. Yeah, Roger Rashad, Rashad Coward on the inside, number 57. Great job working there against the center. Again, just a lockout. Let's wait to find the quarterback on that one. Center on that play, Thornton. You got to keep moving your feet. Don't stop your feet. Don't try to position yourself. Work across that nose, that defensive tackle. Give your running back a chance to cut back. So loss of one, second and 11. Bell keeps it and dives out of bounds. He'll pick up about four or five on the play. He did, but nice job defensively for Old Dominion. They're in that cover two zone right now, making sure they protect the edges. And with Bell, you can see how quick he is. It, it, it's deceiving. He gets outside, but I'll tell you, once he turns north and south, if you don't get him in the gun sights, he's gone quickly. Rich Nagy, their defensive coordinator, told us earlier this week, Look, we have got to keep Bell in our sights this week. We've got to stop him and contain him. He is a dangerous player. Third down and six yards to go. This is where he is dangerous, breaking out of the pocket, and he throws it up and incomplete. That could have been picked off. Yeah, and again, they brought <laughs> defensively. I thought they were going to Old Dominion was going to get a sack on the play, but they screwed up the blitz. They screwed up the twist in the middle. Defensive coordinators aren't going to be too happy, but it was enough to pressure Bell to work him outside the pocket, and you're exactly right again. Probably should have just thrown it out of bounds there. Instead, almost went for pick six. So Austin Barnes to punt for the first time. Marquise Little is standing back at his own 18. Barnes gets off a good punt. High punt. Wow. Backs Little all the way up to the six. Breaks a couple of tackles, and Little gets it up to this 17 or 18. I'll tell you what, that punt left the vacuum. It was in the stratus. <laughs> it went out a window and into the parking lot. A 50 out in droves, and when you consider Eastern Michigan has not had a winning program since 1995. Wow. You have to really give these guys a lot of credit for coming out and supporting this team. And I'll tell you what, it all starts with, you know, it's school officials, coaches, the fans, everybody believing it can get done. Coach Creighton right now got a great support behind them. I mean, they've been 2-10 and 10 forever. It seems like every season, just mark it down 2-10. and 10. Well, maybe this is the year they start to oh, turn nice that play. corner. And again, defensively, look at the push inside. And again, that's your guy, Figueroa. You like this kid, don't you? Yeah, I really do. I tell you what, you know, on the, on the play, he doesn't get the tackle, right. but he's the reason why nothing happens on that side. Nice job against the double team, keeping the body in the gap. He's a now, freshman? Yeah, he's a freshman. Wow. But I'll tell you what, he shows great strength. I, I wonder what it's like in the weightlifting room. Hmm. Bentley, happy feet, and throws this one up into the front row. You can see right now coverage on the outside. East of Michigan, good job locking up and get some time up front. But again, you like this, what you want to see from your quarterback. Don't take a chance. Just airmail it out of bounds. But again, also, too, don't take the big hit. I don't want to see my pocket quarterback taking shots. Mm -hmm. So a good decision by Bentley. Now let's see what he does on third and 11. See, bring some type of twist in the middle, some type of stunt, confuse the quarterback. They do. Little shovel pass that's going nowhere fast. And again, great job in terms of wearing, knowing your responsibility that time. Linebackers in the gap. Take a look at it. Take a look at Zapone in the A gap on one side, eBay on the other side. And again, there's our man, Figueroa, just staying at home. He doesn't leave. He spies on that, looking for any type of screen draw play. Way to stay at home, and folks, that's a freshman. Jeez. Wow, we got some players on the field. What a difference he has made in this contest. And the Monarchs didn't face anyone like that defensively last year against the Eagles. 
punt by Ziffer, stops at midfield and goes straight up in the air. It'll be downed at the 46 yard line. So great field position for Eastern Michigan as they start their third drive of the game. And again, they get good field position. You're exactly right. And they, when you get when you get advantages like this, you want to put points on the board because believe me, when you have a young quarterback like a Schuler Bentley, mm -hmm. you know eventually he's going to get into a rhythm. Yeah, but you don't want him to. So right now you get a chance to put some points on the board, sustain the drive. That's where Eastern Michigan's got to get it done now. All right, right now you're seeing Keelan DeBoer, who is the offensive coordinator for Eastern Michigan, visiting with Reggie Bell, his quarterback. First time, the Eagles got the ball, Baldy. They took it right down the field. Second time, not as much. What did the Monarchs do defensively to change things up? Better job in the zone and staying in position and turning everything back inside. Well, they snap it right back to the back. And rushing over that left side is Shaq Van. And right, Shaq Van. Again, you have the, just what we call that fly motion, jet motion. And what that does, it gets linebackers with happy feet. You get safety moving, should I go? Then you come back inside, and that running back has his chance to go either A gap or B gap back to the weak side. Nice gain on the play. And Van, a redshirt freshman, playing his first collegiate game. A lot of youngsters in this game for both teams. Green. Little screen, and it's completed what to the block. outside. There goes Jackson again. One of the few seniors in the game. Nice job by Reginald Bell, the quarterback. Watch him drop in this and pull the defense. But then I want you on this throwback. Watch the left tackle, Cole Gardner, a former tight end, just enough to come back to get a hand on it. And that's what opens it up for six Darius Jackson down the left side. All the way down to the 10 yard line, a 38 yard play. And there is Cole Gardner, moved from tight end. He gained 25 pounds to play the position and they all say he's a far better left tackle than he ever was as a tight end. <laughs> he probably doesn't believe that. What a wham block. Jackson oh. into the end zone, touchdown. His second TD of the day. Watch the tight end, 84, Sam Brown, and coming across the hole. We call this a split zone. His job is a fin block. Kick out on the last end of the line of scrimmage. Darius Jackson, buddy, you hand the ball to 84. He opened up the door. He made it so you could walk into the end zone. <laughs> well, he ran right over Ooh. Justice Tavilia, too. This Jackson, I'll tell you what. You talk about a guy they created in the factory. Whoa, that's uh, a bionic factory with uh, him running the ball. I should say so. Two rushes on the day. Both of them result in a touchdown. One for 36 yards, the other one for 10 yards. Plus he has a reception for 38 yards. And a very nice job again. Take a look at it here. It's just what we call a split zone and what it is, tight end comes across, makes the trap block. Nice job by Darius Jackson. His key on that play is Press the right side of the line of scrimmage. Make the linebackers flow over the top. Now you've got the cutback lane. He went back behind Cole Gardner, got the hole. So it's a design cut. It is a design cut. And you've got to wait till that trap comes across from the tight end or from the, actually the H-back position. And that's the reason why it opens up. So he goes right, and then fooling the defense, and then boom. Boom back. And you want those linebackers to think you're coming quick. You right. want to look like you want to make it almost look like it's going to go sweep right. So you can kind of take a broader step, yep. thinking then they're going to flow to the top. Now you make that cut coming back. Not just the linebackers, but the secondary as well, exactly. right? Exactly. The whole thing. And in fact, if we have a chance, we might want to take a look at that again. And I'll show you the footwork of Darius Jackson on that so you can understand his keys and why it's so important. The initial footwork going to the line of scrimmage, it sets up the play. How about this? Darius Jackson had two touchdowns in his career. He's a senior. He has two today. So he has doubled his touchdown output in just the first quarter. And, you know, Dave, as we were talking about these two programs, and take a look at Darius Jackson, number six. Now, I want you to watch his footwork here from the tailback position. Watch, he's in the A. See how he steps to the right? It almost thinks it's going to be like a power play. Linebackers flow. Now he waits for that kickout block by the H-back, and there's the whole touchdown. Well, you can see T.J. Ricks. He was like Boom. on a spindle, the yep. linebacker for the Monarchs. And then an easy block for Gardner on Ricks because his feet are lost. Exactly. Very good. Good stuff, Baldy. Catch is made. 
And a nice gain of 12 yards as Schuler Bentley is able to connect with Nick England. I'm telling you, this Schuler Bentley is going to become scary. Yeah, I, yeah, you just don't want him to get in too good of a rhythm, folks, because he can fire the football now. Fires it again to the outside. The catch is made, and then a few extra yards tacked on by Blair Roberts. Nice job in terms of placing that football on the outside shoulder. Take a look at it again. We talked about Shula Bentley being a pocket quarterback. Nice job of getting his feet set. Left toe pointed to where he's got to go with the football. Right on the money. Bentley given time hit though as he throws. Nice pass rush coming from the left defensive end that time, turning the corner. Take a look at the pressure. Working against Mooborn, the right tackle number, excuse me, number 66 on that play. Butler that time just got to the corner. That's Jeremiah Harris. Yeah, nice job on that rip move, and then he's seeing it, and he got that shoulder rip, got turned it real quick, able to get pressure on Bentley. So an incomplete pass, almost another interception for the Eagles, and it's second and ten. Bentley, by the way, is 6 for 11 for 47 yards. A nice little cut back by nice Lowry. Yeah. And Lowry gang tackled, but not before gaining eight on the play. I tell you what, let, let's watch in the center. Nick Clark, number 63. Watch him sustain his block. Great job. And this is the vision that you want. In zone lane, it's all about vision. But watch him, uh, Nick Clark. Good job of moving your feet. Back reads it, makes the cut. Sapone, the first to hit him, but he couldn't hang on. And now Lowry inside Ooh, the 20. I'll tell you what, I think I'm on I-94 with one of those 18 wheelers. Head downhill, folks. You want to step in front of that, go right ahead. Lowry, 33, buddy. Take at it. He said, hey, let's set the tempo. Nice job working against Figaro on the backside on the scoop. Back reads it. I like it, folks. This is what I want to see, some smash now football. Tyler Burns with a really good block on Figaro up front. Lowry again. Block, yeah. Third straight carry, and Lowry pushes the pile forward about four yards. And Old Dominion, folks, they are going to rotate those five up front in the offensive line. And as a former lineman, usually they're five, your five buddies. You knew who was going into camp, who was going to be your starters. Well, they've had injuries in Old Dominion. They're still trying to find that five, trying to get the rhythm. Looks like they're getting comfortable right now. Where they are comfortable at the guards, the two Tylers, Tyler Fisher and Tyler Burns. They look good right now. Good footwork in terms of the double teams. Bentley into the end zone. Back. Touchdown! How about that backside shoulder throw? David Washington. <laughs> Their best receiver goes up on this one. You talk about a quarterback giving him some confidence. Take a look at the throw here. Look at the time he has in the pocket, and he just delivers it. And David Washington, are you kidding me? NBA for that young man there, baby. Skying with the pigskin. Man, he had some hops. And now, I'll tell you what, quarterback wide receiver worked on that in the offseason program because you can see Shula Bentley knew exactly where he had to go with that ball. Single coverage on the outside. Put it right where he needed to. Now Ziffer for the point after. It's good and a good answer by Old Dominion. After watching the Eagles take a 14-0 lead, the Monarchs march right down the field and score on a touchdown pass. Again, look at the cut block on the right side. It opens up the throwing lane for Shuler Bentley. See it right there. Now he can look down the field. And again, it's single coverage on the outside. David Washington, nice job of knowing where you're at in the field. You can see what he did for the snap of the ball. Moved in just a little bit. Now against single coverage, he's got some real estate. And how about the throw by Shuler Bentley? He knows it's got to be out quick. It's like a three-step drop. I delivered the ball right on the money. So on a play like that, you're throwing to that back shoulder because it's almost impossible for the defender to get exactly. there. Exactly. He can't see it. He's got his back turned to the ball. And again, though, give credit up front to that offensive line. By those cut blocks, now your quarterback's got those sight lines. You know, you can talk to defensive linemen, Dave, all the time, and they'll tell you, it's not always about sacks. If I can get my hand in a quarterback's face, I can alter the throw. That time your quarterback 
great vision to the end zone. That's why you could be right on the money with that throw. Isn't it interesting? In the three scoring drives of this game, they've all happened in like lightning speed. Hurry up offense. When you stop, you stop. When you don't, look out. The offense just gets going. And, and on that drive, yep. a quick drive for the Monarchs and a much needed seven points. They did. They put seven on the board. And again, you don't give that defense a chance to communicate on the field. Low kick. It's going to be gathered in at the five yard line. And down at the 25 goes Dustin Creel. And a return of about 20. He slipped in the gray swamp. <laughs> I love the gray, though, don't you? Oh, I do. I mean, it's just a cool look. And again, I think we're just going to call this place the factory. That's the nickname for it. But Rhinearson Stadium has become known as the factory. And it all goes with everything that's going on around Ypsilanti. This is a blue collar town. This is a town that has gone through some tough times, much like this football team, okay. even worse than this football team. Three factories closing in this area. Well, this factory is open for business. Oh, and they are. And I'll tell you what, they're getting things done. There's Jackson in one of those autos right now. Bell keeps it and falls forward for a yard or two. And again, the penetration by the Monarchs that time gave Bell very much a uh, very tough decision to make there, whether to hand off or keep it. Yeah, Zimenez that night, that time, one of those young defensive ends, only a freshman, 6'3", 240. Nice job of getting up the field. Really kind of destroyed the timing of that play. Way more freshman. Oh. True freshman and redshirt freshman How playing than seniors? seniors. How many seniors do we have today playing today? 11. Got a hold. There's a flag down. This is coming back. I thought we might have Thornton on the hold. Personal foul. Oh. We're up in the passer. Oh. The defense oh, number I, 98. I thought Thornton coming out on that screen on got a time. hand on the block and grabbed a jersey. Zimenez is caught. And let's check out the end of this play. Getting going to protect the quarterback. Can't got to keep everything below the shoulder pads. Let's see where he comes in. Yeah, right there. Uh, got to go on by. It looked like he tried to hold up, but at the last second, he actually put his helmet there right in the quarterback Bell. That takes it all the way near midfield to the 48-yard line. Bell keeps it, wants to throw. Man was wide open all of a sudden, though. In steps a defender, Aaron Young, with a pickoff. Nice job by Aaron Young falling off that time. Seeing, could again, just reading quarterback's eyes. And quarterback on that time rolling out. Reginald Bell just got to do a better job in terms of delivery. Here's the run fake. He gets outside the pocket. Just got to loft the football a little bit more. And again, he doesn't even see on that play because he's got his eyes all the time on his receiver. Aaron Young's just sitting inside. Reginald Bell never even saw him. Never saw him at all. There's a penalty on this play, Baldy. It is an interception, but then a penalty on the Monarchs after the interception was made, a block in the back. You gotta have that pre-snap read on that design rollout like that. You've got to know where the underneath coverage is. Linebackers will flow much quicker. Even each secondary are so quick they will fall off in the whole great job that time by Aaron Young just sitting there following quarterback, reads his eyes, come away with the pick. So because of the block in the back, the Monarchs will still have the ball, but they'll have it back at their own 26 instead of near midfield. And again, costly penalty now and back you up. It's a former lineman you never used to have to like to go 80, 75, or 80 yards for a touchdown. Just 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. An entertaining first quarter. Lowry pushing that pile. Excuse me, that's not Lowry, that's Cox. Jeremy Cox, a true freshman. You talked about those guards in the middle. Let's watch 65, Tyler Burns, a big man, 6'6", 390,000 pounds. I'll tell you what, he's bigger than the state of Virginia. It's easy to run behind a guy like that. Well, we've run out of time here in the first quarter. You're right. Tyler Burns, for the record, folks, is 6'6", 370. That's still big. It's, <laughs> it's not big as fan. much as you said. And he's nimble. He's <laughs> <Yeah>. very nimble. <laughs> yes. Yeah, boy, he's nimble and quick. What a quick first quarter.
Lots of action in that first quarter. Two touchdowns by Darius Jackson, and the answer from them. Coming off a 2-10 and ten season at home, and yet they have a 14-7 lead against the Monarchs of Old Dominion. Old Dominion, of course, the best startup program in the history of college football. And you could say the Eagles are a startup program as well, Baldy, because this is a team that has been down for so long and trying to come back. And again, you talk just talking with Coach Creighton. I mean, he's going to be challenged every day in trying to get this program going in the right direction. You can see it right now, but he's got to believe he can get it done. Now the inside handoff again on second and 11 to Jeremy Cox. He gains about four. Yeah, they talked a lot about Jeremy Cox, and he's a, another one of those powerful running backs. They have him listed at 207, but, folks, he ain't no 207. Excuse he's, me, that was second and one, not second and 11, obviously, and they move the chains, a first down. Schuler wants to throw it downfield. It's incomplete. And no flags. No chance on that one. Had a little bit of time to step up in the pocket again. You get some pressure off the edges right now by Eastern Michigan. Good, good job from the defensive end position. It did alter the throw a little bit that time by Schuler Bentley, but that's where you can see the deep pass is where he needs to work. Does that help loosen up the defense though by just oh, throwing it down? Ball? You've got to make the safeties. You gotta make a monitor. They gotta be able to play that. Looks deep like pass. a blitz is coming. And Great what do they do? They changed the call at the line when they saw the blitz and the give to Cox. Yeah, but nice job by Cox on that. He reads eBay in that front side A gap. Still presses the line of scrimmage, but that's the great vision he has. Able to jump back to the left side of the center, pick up positive yards on the play. You got a game plan around eBay, don't oh, you? Oh, you do. He is so quick. Even at the line of scrimmage, he can just jump around people. He's number 10 out there, folks, defensively for the Eagles. He had 133 tackles a year ago. Go blitz again. Bentley tripped up. He was going to get a first down. We now we have hit a eBay. late hit on Bentley. And eBay was the one that got him. And I think eBay was the one who has the penalty. Yes. Costly. So costly. You just did a great job on the blitz. You talked about it, Dave. You closed the door. Watch it. They're going to bring the house on the young quarterback. Bring it from everywhere. Again, slide protection to the right. Right guard and running back. Don't pick it up. And again, here's the tackle. You've stopped it. Now eBay comes across elbow. They're going to throw it every time. Yeah. No reason for it. Well, instead of forcing a punt for the Monarchs, now Old Dominion back in business at the 42-yard line of the Eagles. And you can see Shula Bentley not really comfortable running that football, rather stay in the pocket. Now they're in this pistol formation. Well, you said he's a pocket quarterback. Yeah, play action fake. <laughs> and right across the middle and incomplete. Intended for Marquise Little. And again, it's just about getting timing. You can see on that play, nice job on the play action fake out of the pistol that time. But when he got back around, Shula Bentley delivered the ball a little bit too soon. That's why that ball sailed on him a little bit. Take your time. Get that eye contact receiver. Instead, you would have had a big catch on the play. Little was open, Baldy. Just Wide missed open. him. Second and ten. Draw play. Goes for about three. Again, you see the linebackers, Williams, Zappone, eBay, all so good for these Eagles. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they're doing a much better job, too, in the defensive line of finding the football when that and that no one's a draw play, getting off blocks and falling back inside and making a play. Passing play here, 7 of 14 so far, Bentley. Here, what's coming off the edge again, the blitz. And a bad snap. Bentley falls on the ball. And exactly right, and it was about the confusion up front. You had the series before where we had the penalty, and you saw it, and it caused it. And here, Bentley now trying to get the protection call. And again, center on this one, I'm telling you, it was eBay on that play that caused the problem. Tyler Compton wanted to get his hands on number 10 so quick. Poor job with the snap. Quarterback now gets sacked. And remember, Compton, normally a guard, forced to play center in this game, and that's two bad snaps. That one a really bad snap. The other one, Bentley saved. Yes, he did. And again, I'm telling you, folks, you can't interchange offense. So you got to find those five and get them comfortable. Right now, pass protection, you can see the issues right now with Old Dominion. Another high snap. Ziffer gets it off. 
And the decision by Creel to let it go is going to cost him about 20 yards. And you and heard it's down at the six. And you heard the coaches on the sideline, too. They were expected to return on that play. So Eastern will have the ball, but Dominion 14-7. Remember, these two teams don't have a lot of history. They played just once before, and that was last year at Old Dominion. Won by the Monarchs 17-3. The Eagles scored on two of their first three possessions. Took a 14-0 lead before the Monarchs were able to answer. So here is Reggie Bell starting kind of in the shadows of their own goalpost at the six-yard line. Make sure you take care of the football when you're backed up like this. Something simple. Ball out of the quarterback's hands, get your skill players, let them make positive yards. Know your assignments, know your responsibilities. And they give the ball to Van. He powers forward for a few yards. Up to the eight. Yeah, he does power forward on that, but I thought he took a poor angle on that play. That was Jackson, excuse, excuse me. There is Jackson on that one. I, with the trap block, it was a trap on the end land line of scrimmage. So I thought his angle should have taken him back towards the tackle. Instead, he cut back inside, so a minimal gain when it should have been about six or seven yards on the play. Now we have an injured player down on the field. Looks like Galen Evans. Yeah, it looks like he got his knee caught on that turf. And that turf seemed pretty smooth down yeah, We did. were walking down on it. I never liked, well, again, when I was in the league, what we played on was basically concrete. They put a carpet on top of concrete. This stuff they have now, the chopped up tires in it and everything, much softer, much easier on the knees and the ankles. Mm -hmm. On all the joints. Yes. I don't like to see that. Evans, a sophomore from Annapolis. And they had injuries here too. Defensive line was an area they had some depth, but in talking with the coaches, you know, going into summer camp and both teams not very much in terms of two days. Basically one day of two days, all mm -hmm. of them. Gone to single practices because you just can't afford the injuries anymore. And you know, right here it's costly. We were talking to Bobby Wilder earlier this week about the secret to their success. I mean, this is gonna be, I think, one of the great stories of college football. And getting this started off as a 1AA independent, then an FCS team in the Colonial Athletic Association, and then moving to Conference USA in their second year now as an FBS school. Last year they were bowl eligible, didn't get invited to a bowl. But he said, look, it's all about this. I hired some good assistant coaches. We have good players. We have great fans, a great administration, and a great area to recruit to. Exactly that. And I'll let you bring up the 353. Three. Yeah, we, he said, we what's both? your 353? Three, and we both kind of were stunned on the phone. What do you mean, what's our 353? Three? He said, well, you play 12 games. What do you do on the other days of the year? The 353. Three. And he talked and about And then his assistant coaches were like, that doesn't apply <laughs> to us. <laughs> there was no beat time. Because <laughs> they're working 365. That's right. And maybe a little bit more. They might find some extra time in the year they have to go. <laughs> He said, no, they let their players, you know, yeah. go, go to the beach. And, and how many stay in the community? Area. Yeah, the graduates stay in the community. Little drop back and almost picked off. I don't know if Bell is telegraphing his passes or what, but the defenders for the Monarchs are all over him. And he just a little late with the ball. He had Cody Tuttle just working up the seam again to take a look on the quarterback here. Reginald Bell, I think he's a little late with delivering the football. It's a little play action fake. But right this there. ball's got to be thrown to the outside shoulder further. It wasn't. He's thrown to where the receiver is, not to where he's going to. So now it's third and eight. Little screen pass. Close to a first down. It might depend on the spot. Yeah, tunnel, they just had a nice little tunnel screen coming that time. That's Herb Kevin Holmes. Davis, the transfer from Indiana. It is a first down. And her home out on that play. They also had Thornton number 70 on the play. Nice job on that tunnel screen. Get back inside. Now they go right back to the run. Jackson to the 29. And this is just a simple zone read. And watch Jimenez, number 98. He's got to work up the field. He has quarterback. No linebacker stepping inside because you know why? They're looking for a quarterback sweep to the outside. So even when Bell doesn't do something, he draws their attention. And he does. And what linebackers are told, we've got to contain him. So what is that's why they're coming back inside right now. You're seeing linebackers flow so quickly. You get big guys up front, hat on hat. 
It's going to create seams up the middle. That's why they're having success running inside the tackles right now. Is that why we're seeing more dual threat quarterbacks than ever before? Without a doubt right now in the zone read, it's, it's the only way it's effective. Little reverse and a block by the QB. This is going to go for big yards up to the 42 yard line. Nice play by Blake Bannum on the reverse. Folks, watch the former tight end, now left tackle, Cole Gardner, number 75. He works down the field. Now watch him on the reverse. There's your Blackberry quarterback, but how about this guy on the outside? Wow. 270 pounds. Great job of leading the play. I loved how he sealed inside, and then once he knew the place was play was reversed, man, he just darted outside and made a huge block downfield. And coaches talked about his athleticism from playing tight end just allowed him to easily advance at that offensive tackle position. They say he gained 25 pounds, but it was easy for him to do that because he always felt like he had to cut weight to be a tight end. Second and seven, Bell again dancing around. And he'll get it up to midfield. Bell on the quarterback, Keeper. A nice pass start that time by Tim Ward, number 93. That's the way to stay active on the play. Initially, he got up the field on that play, working against Cole Gardner on the pass rush, but then comes back inside and li literally makes the tackle. If not, it would have been probably a first down on the run. And you mentioned Tim Ward, Baldy. And oh, by the way, yet another true freshman. Ward came to campus in January at Old Dominion, gained 35 pounds, and here he is as a starter. Third down, two yards to go. Little juke move at the line, I'm not sure. This one could, could be, be just close. a little bit short. Yeah, there wasn't much to the front side at all. Nice job in terms of penetration by the guys up front. Big men in the middle there by Old Dominion. Good pad level. They got the push. Let's see if they give them. They're going to go ahead and take the measure. Well, they're going to give it to him right on the field. First He's down call. That's twice now in this series that the Eagles have gotten a first down by inches. Eastern Michigan, nice job in the trenches that time. Sustain your blocks. Keep your feet moving. Running backs are going to find a crease. They're told short yardage. Hey, you got to become your blocker. Go make something happen. A lot of changes offensively. Instead of being fourth and inches, it now becomes a first and ten, so they change personnel. Look if they come back inside with the run. There goes Bell to the outside, room to run. And that little extra fake probably got him another five or six yards. Yeah, he got outside of Scott Wiggins, number 94. And the thing is here, a mobile quarterback helps defeat that great pass rush up front. Take a look at Wiggins working against right tackle. Got some penetration that time, but loses quarterback who's able to get outside by some time. Pick up great yardage on that play. Malik Johnson was able to stop him, but not before a gain of nine. There goes Shaq Van, powering his way through the middle. That is a Mack truck. <laughs> How about that run? They called him a home run hitter. He would have ran through that brick wall and sit there watching. He doesn't need a hammer. He doesn't through. need a sledgehammer. He's his own sledgehammer. Van again cuts it back inside the 15. Let's look at the one before this. Take a look at him again, we talked about Shaq, and again, linebackers lined up to the outside to take away quarterback ability to run, and the Shaq man takes advantage. Look how low he is. Oh, His there's center legs. of gravity. Look at the legs drive. Little toss out to the wing. And this will be a penalty. I think it's gonna be roughing the passer again. You're exactly right, and again, they took a big shot that time. Reginald Bell that time, nice job on the tunnel screens. Went the run act, play action fake. And he took the hit, hit afterwards. A, again, they're going to call it. Anytime late, anytime you're above the shoulder pads, let's see if we can take a look at it again. Coach not happy. Let's see it right afterwards. And and he took two steps. Step. Yeah, took he... two steps. I mean, it's, it's you know, and your head's going down like a missile. They're thinking you're going to go right to the face, to the face mask. Officials are going to call it every time. First and goal at the six. Tuttle goes in motion. Van kind of bobbled the handoff, and that really screwed up the timing. 
Yeah, Simpson, the linebacker, number 36 that time. Again, it's like, I thought about it. See if we could take a look at some of the lineups. We can see those outside linebackers in his 4-3 defense. They're playing actually on the outside shoulder of the offensive tackle because they're so worried in that zone read that they won't be in position to get Bell. So that's why oh, this, on this drive, you've been seeing so many of that inside zone running scheme here by Eastern Michigan. Again, title in motion. Same play, different result. Man, I'll tell you what, you do not want to tackle 34 in the fourth quarter, folks. This guy is absolutely, he could run underneath the cockroach to get positive yards. <laughs> he's so low, those shoulder pads. Well, he's about six feet tall, weighs about 210. And again, with that low center, of, and you can just see those legs are churning. And he doesn't stop on forward lane. I mean, they hit him, and he keeps going. So now it's third and goal at the one. The bionic man out of the factory. From the eye, Van stopped behind the line. Now a decision to be made by the Eagles. Looks like miscommunication between fullback on his responsibility. Easy meet that time in the backfield. Take a look at it here. Again, some initial penetration, but left tackle that time. Cole Gardner ran in some trouble. Was that uh oh that time? Was that Apu? No, it was Reed, number 96, and also Fox in there. But I think initially it was Harold Reed that time who had gotten lower, and eventually he was the one initially caused the run disruption on the play. Coach Creighton has made his decision. He's not going for it on fourth and two. He brings in his field goal kicker, Dylan Mulder. Who last year was 8 of 12. A 19-yard field goal is good. And that puts the Eagles back up by a couple of scores. So a drive that stalls at the two, but three more points for Eastern Michigan. Marks of Old Dominion. Yeah, I'll tell you, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, buddy. I was going to say, we want everyone, Baldi, to join us in the conversation on Twitter on Facebook and on Instagram. Social Saturday, where it's at for college football fans, at Live on ASN, that's your home for social media. Eastern Michigan average last year was ninth in the conference, in rushing, averaging 137 yards already today, 153 yards here in the middle of the second quarter. Decided they're going to set the tone and the tempo, and they've done it. And a booming kick that goes a couple of yards deep. Be brought out. And not even to the 20-yard line. Nice coverage that time. Everybody stayed in the lanes for Eastern Michigan. Close when they got that to depth of the football. You talked about special teams and how that might be as big a concern for head coaches coming into a season as anything. And, and one of the things why it's such a concern now is because the 20 hour rule. You just don't, and you know, remember folks, 20 hours a week is all these coaches are allowed with the players. And remember that includes the game time. So special teams are one of the areas that suffer and you worry about it so much, especially when you've got so many freshmen starting on your team. By the way, Figueroa is wearing a new number. Well, now he's back to 97. So we were told that Figueroa was going to be 95, but he, I see him out there with his 97 again. So they must have fixed whatever problem was with that jersey. And his presence known, whether it's 95, 97, or whatever you want to give him, he's flying to the football all the time. I give him credit. He hustles from that nose tackle position. Very strong at the point of attack. Gain of five on the play, second and five. Under four minutes to go, first half. Lowry, nice cutback. Cut. Lowry tripped up at the 35 or he was gone. Watch Tyler Burns. The world is going to block out in front of you. Watch him come up and get on the linebacker. You're going to get me? You're going to take on that guy? You better make sure you've got your life insurance in place there. Good cut by Lowry. Just something behind the mountain, man. Toss out into the wing, and it's caught by Zach Pascal, but no gain. In fact, a loss of a couple. Good flow on the defense that time by Jeremiah Harris from the defensive end position. They would, well, go ahead. 
we talked a lot about how the Monarchs have to replace Taylor Heineke, their quarterback, but they're also replacing Antonio Vaughn, their all-time leading receiver. Exactly. Also, Jake Mon in the middle, the center position, too. So, talked about up front, trying to get those five guys on the same page, looking good, sometimes running the ball. It's pass protection been the issue. Toss out to the wing again. It's fumbled and incomplete. And again, that's all because the blitz coming off the edge that time altered the throw of the quarterback. And you can see right, you, you made the, you, I mean, you made a great point here as we were talking off the air. This is one thing I said, young quarterback, you talk about what he did in high school, you talk about all the little things. Well, you know what? You don't see the speed of the game. You don't see all the blitzes that you're going to see in mm -hmm. college. And they've been effective here in the first half, Eastern Michigan, kind of rattling a little bit. The quarterback's a little bit. I think anytime you have a young player, if you can make him make a quick decision, yep. it is much more difficult on him than letting him get comfortable. And I, I think we should get a timeout on the field. They're trying for Shula Bentley, giving him one read and let him deliver the ball. But again, you saw on that blitz, he never really set his feet well once he took the snap and didn't, couldn't really deliver the football on the money. Now, the advantage for Bentley is not a true freshman. He's a redshirt freshman, so he was able to be schooled by Taylor Heineke all last year. And we'll take this time out with him. 17 so far in this game for 64 yards and a touchdown. But Eastern Michigan has really dominated this first half. They have outgained the Monarchs 236 yards to 123 and lead by 10. On a third and 12, pass across the middle is caught. Almost fumbled, but caught by Jonathan Duhart, and he takes it down to the 35. Well, our young quarterback grew up on that play. He was going to take the sack, but watch him step up. Great job in the pocket now. This is where he knows the clown clock goes off on the back of his head. He goes, I've got to get rid of the ball. Steps up in the pocket. Now he can deliver the ball right on the money. Finds Duhart there on the deep route. But again, integrity of the pocket allowed his quarterback to step up. Good job there by Shula Bentley delivering the ball. So now the Monarchs are back in business at the 35 of the Eagles. Yeah, look like they continue to work the middle of that field. Quick pass to the outside. It's caught and some yards after the catch by Isaiah Harper. Yeah, safety's outside the hash marks right now, and it looks like the middle of that field is wide open. They're going to continue to go ahead. It looks like just keep working the edges, but look for them to come back in the middle of the deep post. I think they've got some chances. Quarterback right now, Shuler Bentley, really getting comfortable. Handoff goes nowhere. And in fact, a loss of a couple by Ray Lowry. Yeah, just take a look in the middle. We talked about those big guys. Look at it right up front. And again, I think they've done a much better job in terms of finding quarterback. Excellent job on that time in terms of hands, shedding blocks, finding a way to make a play. Loss of one, second and 11. Bentley given a little bit of time and his throw is again right on target and Blair Roberts has the catch and again it just seems like in this drive all of a sudden we were talking off camera we were wondering about Shaw Bentley but here they give him the chance to make some throws get some time knowing where he has to go with the ball right on the money third and three Bentley's gonna run for it that surprised everyone yeah, he did. He survived Jeremiah Harris, too, because he done that play in that little zone read look that time. He didn't even think about covering quarterback on that one. But Shula Bentley like, decided to keep it. He gets around the edge. Looks like he maybe pulled a little bit of yeah, muscle. Or, I was going to say, he looks like he's shaking. He's, yeah. he's limping. We'll probably look at that with one minute remaining in the first half. You know, pistol formation now. Let's see where they go with the ball. The handoff, the cutback by Lowry. And then he cuts right back into traffic and gains maybe a yard. And Harris up front, Figueroa up front, also number 96 on the plate uh, on that one too. On Old Dominion has two timeouts They're remaining. Brown. Everybody's staying at home. McLean also too, number eight. Everybody playing well in the trenches against some of these zone plays, some of these draw plays, able to find the ball carrier, making a play. Second and goal from the nine. Into the end zone, back shoulder play again, incomplete this time. 
Blair Roberts couldn't hang on to a pass that was in his hands. Yeah, that ball was out quick, too, by Schuler Bentley. Take a look at it again in the pocket. We talked about his throwing motion. Nice job of getting his feet set. Ball delivered right where it needs to be. And again, it looked like it was going to connect him, but Blair Roberts just couldn't quite get around to get that football. So now third and goal from the nine, 15 seconds remaining. Possible for the corner to stop on that backside shoulder, make adjustments. Blair Roberts got to come away with the catch. The handoff up the middle. Lowry has stopped shy of the end zone, and now they're going to stop the clock. Yeah, five seconds to go, a timeout. Out there with Lowry, he hits the hole so quick. Those feet are pumping up and down. That time working again, just jump cut to the back side. Really allows those blocks to initially get set. Finds a crease, and that was one time Eastern Michigan didn't bring blocks. You have a timeout remaining, but it's fourth and goal. Do you even consider going for it here on fourth and goal at the two, or do you just take the three points and get back within one score? Well, I think, you know, there's there's two fields of thought to this. We take the points, we go into halftime on this one, down by seven, you're on the road, and you're thinking, okay, maybe he's going to go back. But then again, they're thinking, you know what, maybe we want to put points where get that touchdown here, because you you haven't been all the time down here in the red zone. You're thinking, i got to get seven. I'd kick it. You kick it. If you're I conservative. Was coach, I would kick it. I was, if I was a lineman, I'd say, Coach, let's run slant 34. We'll get you six. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, guess what he's going to do? He's going to kick it. Yeah, exactly right. I think it's the right call. Well, it is. Now, no, you're on down the road. by more than 10, I'd yep. say, all right, maybe. But this gets you back within a touchdown. 20 yard attempt. It's like an extra point. And it's good. Toughest play in making the kick. Nice job up front by the guys. Get, make sure the kicker has a chance to make that boot. And you're exactly right. Down by seven here in the first half on the road. And that's the way the first half comes to a close. So Satchel Ziffer connects on the field goal. And these two teams go off into their locker room. And it's a seven-point lead for Eastern Michigan, a team that finished just 2-10 and ten a year ago. So we'll come back. We've got all kinds of activity for you at the half, so stick around. Bob Generelli, the Associate Commissioner of the MAC, will be joining us after the break. We'll come back. We welcome you back to Eastern Michigan as the Eagles lead at 17 to 10, coming back out of the tunnel and out onto this beautiful gray field, the factory in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And they're bringing the wrench, too. Did you see that guy bringing the wrench? It's a 51-pound wrench. And one of the things that Chris Creighton has said about this wrench is we're trying to close the gap. Well, let me tell you something. If you can carry that wrench, I think you've done something good. But you know the name, the factory? I could see coming here as a freshman, the seniors tell me, man, you ain't going to like the factory. Why? Well, in the offseason, I'm going to guarantee you they're running gases out here oh, in yeah. the factory. So <laughs> get ready to go down to the factory, folks. Get on the conveyor belt. They're running the ball. Interesting talking with Athletic Director Heather Like about what she saw in Chris Creighton and all the values that he brings in addition to the ability to win some games and to change the culture. But it's the overall presence of Chris Creighton and what he's done with this program. Yeah, Chris Creighton talks about the one of the things why, and we asked him what was specifically about this job because he goes, I wanted the chance to take boys and develop them into men. I wanted to show them about leadership and all the qualities that you would need in life. All right, let's look at the numbers from the first half, Baldy. What did you see in the first half? What adjustments are these two teams going to make? Well, I think for Eastern Michigan, you've got to get your quarterback involved, Reginald Bell, in terms of running the football. He's just so dynamic. He changes everything defensively, freezes everybody. I think it just opens up holes for Darius Jackson. We saw the rushing yards here. For Old Dominion in the second half, Let's give Schuler Bentley some time. Let him give him some opportunities. At the end of that second quarter, he started getting in the rhythm. I think down the middle of the field, if those safeties for Eastern Michigan continue to play wide, middle of the field should be open to so big throws. So Satchel Ziffer will kick things off to start the second half. Eastern Michigan has the ball first. Nice run back. There it is. Special teams. Fumble late, but 
They're going to say down by contact and rule down on the field, but a really good return by Andrew Duckett. Yeah, Andrew Duckett, nice job of getting behind his blocks, finds a seam to the outside. And you want to change the dynamics of the game, folks. Special teams is where it starts. And again, as I said, it's so important. All the coaches you talk to at any level, high school, college, pro, so all say it's always about special teams. I'm unsure about special teams because mm -hmm. you don't have the time. In my day when we'd spend all day in the field, you would get a half hour of special teams in every day. Now they just don't have that luxury. Well, you saw the numbers on Reggie Bell in that first half. He begins again in good field position, and in motion goes Bantam. The inside give to Darius Jackson, and he goes right up the gut all the way to the 40. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Shaq Van, Darius Jackson, these two guys running between the tackles. They provide so much power, so much strength. But again, I'd like to see him try to get Reginald Bell on the outside. Let him get on the edge. Even if linebackers are there, get him in open field. He can make people just make people miss. As we pointed out, Bell, one of seven players in the country to lead his team both in passing and in rushing and that pass is off target to Creel. And one of the things Reginald Bell is going to have to continue to work on are just the little things. You can see his footwork. He doesn't take the time to set his feet. Just kind of threw that ball flat foot at that time and it just died on him. Want to take your game to the next level? Got to work on those little steps. Well, 1,859 yards of total offense last year. Wide snap, picks it off, now looking to run. He's got the first down. That's what you're talking about, Baldy. Let him run a little bit. Let him run, but watch how he puts the football away at the last second. It starts off thinking, uh-oh, he's carrying a loaf of bread. Nice job, doesn't have the quick read outside. There's the fake. Now, put the ball, both hands around at the end. No chance for a fumble. Once you got contact or you could feel it, both hands came in, little pump fake. And the pass off target again to Creel. Yeah, wide open down the middle there, a little pump fake. And again, we we had a chance to watch quarterback Reggie Bell warm up. And one of the areas we thought maybe there's some difficulties was the deep pass. And you see that today. Just the accuracy, the comfort level there is just not there yet for the young man. Interesting. Your thought was he should run the ball a little more, and he's come out throwing the ball more. I think so. I just think it just puts the defenses on their heels, but they're giving them an opportunity instead to throw the football. So far, six for 11 through the air. Breaks outside again. This is where he's dangerous. Lofts the pass out, but again, way off target, and a late hit again. Rashad Coward with a late hit, and Bell goes down hard. And he is not a big man, folks. I mean, last year, he gets called the field. Quarterback decides to roll outside of the pocket here and he's trying to extend the play with his legs, but he's got to understand that, you know what, those big guys are coming headhunting. Rashad Coward from Brooklyn, New York, 6'6", 307 pounds, brought the Brooklyn Bridge with him on that play, yeah. laid the quarterback out. That was helmet to helmet. Yep. And Bell is very, very slow in getting up. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's seeing some stars right now. And this is where a mobile quarterback, and we talk with coaches, He's put on about 20 pounds. Now, if he hang out with Baldy, I'd give him 35 in the <laughs> offseason. But watch him last year on film so frail, and we had a chance to see him this afternoon in warm-ups. You can see he's not the biggest man. So, again, when he decides to roll out in that play, he's got to understand that he's a target. Hey, Baldy, I might have a job for you. You know how they have coaching specialists for everything? <laughs> Maybe you could be the weight gain coach. coach. Oh, wow. you know? I you. Be there good. we go, buddy. I, so now you're going to be asking me for a percentage afterwards. Yeah, the, the gloves are off. That's it. <laughs> well, let's see. Bell's coming yeah, out. He, he is uh, right now. He is seeing stars and a little dizzy as he yeah, comes he, off the field. Yeah, walking the backup is Brogan Roback, and we were watching Roback in warm-up. Roback has a better delivery, but he doesn't have the mobility of a Reggie Bell. You're exactly right. I thought just running the football, Reggie Bell, but again, he rolls outside the pocket. And anytime the quarterback gets outside the pocket, you have got to understand you've got to get rid of that football because somebody's coming from back inside. Time Bell didn't get rid of the ball. Well, they've got Roback. He is split out as a receiver here. Van is behind the line, and now we got flags going everywhere. False start on Cole Gardner. Yeah, just using a direct snap on this one. Wow. Cole Gardner, the left tackle offside someplace, 75. First and 15. 
Now Let's quarter. see if they stick with that. No, now quarterback nope. up, up underneath center. So well, it's first and 15. Much bigger quarterback, too. Bigger in size, too. Going to get him to throw right away and right on target. Finds Tuttle, yeah. Cody Tuttle finds the seam and gets it down to the 30. Nice job by Tuttle coming back to the football. And again, ball placed inside. There's no chance the linebacker to come back and get a strip on that play. Working against T.J. Ricks. Comes in, one play. Roback's out. Bell back in. Yeah, he got his senses back a little bit. Probably lost his win more than anything when he took the big hit that time on the outside. That time by Rashard Coward. They go over there on the protocol, make sure everything's okay, and there must is. be because there he goes running. That's it, lost contain. And El Dominion does a good job of stringing that out. He goes out of bounds after a gain of a couple. Yeah, and here, just take a look on the zone read, and this is why it's so important. You've got to know your responsibilities on this play here. And on that play, 94, Wiggins again. He's got to work up the field. I know he's got quarterback because linebackers are sitting inside for tailback. So you got quarterback, you close. Nice job that time by Bell on the read. Well, third and three in what might be two down territory here. They might go for it on fourth if they don't make it here. Getting the call from the sidelines here. Seeing the adjustment, cover one defensively. I think they're going to probably just work to the inside to Tuttle off coverage. I would think maybe a quick pass. There's the quick pass and a first down. Ball squirts out, but not before. The receiver, Strange, goes out of bounds. Yeah, exactly right. And again, you see the corner safety run off with the inside receiver that time. And Chris Strange just works a quick out pattern. Quarterback delivers the ball right on the money. So they move the chains again. The ball spotted down at the 22. There goes Jackson. Hit after a gain of one. Yeah, T.J. Ricks made sure that play ended real quick. Watch T.J. Ricks on the tackle on the inside here. Linebacker. Ball. There's the trap. He comes from the outside and fills quickly on that play. Good job of wrapping up. And Derrick Jackson, one of those powerful running backs. East of Michigan doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, boy, Jackson looked like a huge hole. Yep. And then all of a sudden, Ricks was there. So a gain of just two, second and eight. And you can see right now, you can see it's a 4-3 defense. You see where their safeties are outside the hash. You see the outside linebackers outside. They're looking for that zone read. Look for it. Come back inside. The play. You got it. Here it is. There it is to Jackson. Breaks one tackle, oh. breaks another tackle, oh. and down to the 10. Man, bulldozer down here in the factory. Nice job that time by Reggie, but Reggie Bell this time on the read. He sees the middle of the field. Everything's covered, so he just dumps it off quickly to number six. Now, folks, hold on. Put the seatbelt on with number six hitch. Quick hitter to the outside. And into the end zone for the touchdown, Dustin Creel. Quarterback that time showing some comfort level, reads it well. Creel just a wide receiver screen. Great job by the fullback that time on the block. Panham, number 40, take a look on the block. And again, defense initially looking for Darius Jackson. Panham on the outside, nice job on the cut block that time. But again, that was all starting because the effectiveness of the inside running game couldn't quite blow the ball. Quarterback comes back outside with the ball. But once Bell got his bell rung, he came out three for three. He much comfortable on that time. Nice job on the short passing game and delivering the ball. So now Mulder for the point after. And don't look now, but it's a two touchdown lead for Eastern Michigan, a team that won just two games a year ago. But Reggie Bell and the Eagles have a 24 to 10 advantage. 11-27 remaining in the third quarter as Dustin Creel walks into the end zone. There's usually a reason. And there is, and I just want to show you defensively what Old Dominion's been looking at here in terms of where their linebackers are lined up in terms of on the outside. And it has been the reason why they've had so much success, Eastern Michigan, coming back inside on the run play. And again, to continue, pound the ball inside, but a nice job in the last formation that time, punch formation. They got some people caught up in terms of the mess, and then good job by quarterback delivering the ball on the outside. We'll take another look at that right after this kickoff. Reggie Bell on the phone getting the congratulations from upstairs. And another good drive for the Eagles to take a two touchdown lead. It matches their biggest lead of the game. End over end kick. It'll come down at the one. Here comes Jackson. Nice. We got a late hit. 
We're going to have a late hit added on top of that kickoff return. Excuse me, that's Zach Paschal with the return. And he brings it up to the 31. And 31 and add probably another 15 on this, right? Here's Rodney Burnett. Foul, face mask on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So they'll tack on 15 more. Let's go back to that touchdown. Yeah, I just want to take a look at Creel on this play again. Now you see where your outside linebackers have been playing here all day for Old Dominion. Because why? Because of the zone read. Now you have the bunch formation. Look how they step inside. Now you've got the leverage from the bunch formation. Creel walks into the end zone. And the reason he walks in. A Bannon. great block by Blake Bannum. But again, setting that up with position. They got Old Dominion out leverage that time. Nice job on the formation. But again, you have to account for quarterback mobility. That's why those outside linebackers are so wide. Coach Creighton not happy because his special teams gave up a, a good run back and then tacked it on with a face mask. So 46-yard line is where they start. And look at this. There goes Jeremy Cox. Fire. Wow. Smoke. Ray Lowry, excuse me. Lowry with the touchdown. And again, just up front. Take a look at the big guys up front. They get to the second level on the zone block. And again, it looked like some miscommunication defensively. Who had back inside in the B gap? And Lowry, just a freight train, getting a full head of steam that time. In for the touchdown. Lowry with 16 touchdowns on the ground last year, his first this year. And Lowry goes over 100 yards on the day, 124 yards on 15 carries, an average of eight. Of course, when you really run off a big one like that, it's easy to get your average way up. And I'll tell you one thing in watching him so far this year, is some of the changes, he's just hitting the line of scrimmage so much quicker. 54 yards in the plays. I mean, downhill. So now a penalty on Eastern Michigan offsides. So Ray Lowry, the freshman of the year in Conference USA a year ago, over 100 yards on the day today. And a 54-yard touchdown run. So all the hard work by Eastern Michigan to begin this half, it's equalized in one play. A 10-second drive for Ray Lowry and the Monarchs. Yeah, Lowry just finding the creep. Touchdown ball to you, were an offensive lineman for a dozen years in the NFL. I know you like to talk about the big guys in the trenches. Yeah, you do a great job. There's only five men in the box now, but watch Nick Clark working with his backside guard, Tyler Fisher. We call that a scoop block. Now, let's freeze it, folks. Now, look at Nick Clark. Great job of getting on the linebacker, eBay. Coaches said we got to get a hat on hat. Backside guard, Tyler Fisher, keeps moving his feet. Nobody can fall back inside. Great job by Lowry reading that, saying I'll stay front side. But that's what you got to do. Got to get to the second level. But that's that blocking I'm talking about, that zone block. And everybody in unison, nice job by Old Dominion that time on the run play. And then the burst of speed by Lowry to outrun both Daquan Pace and Juan Geraldo. Short kick. Taken at the eight. Nice little cutback and a run all the way up to the 30-yard line. Well, the Eagles have been resilient and they've had the lead throughout. Nice field position again. Nice return out to the 31-yard line. Well, they've gotten some good returns and again, Devon Russell and has I been doing a good job in returning. Dave, you asked me, and I'm going to tell you again. Reginald Bell, Reggie Bell, has got to ring the bell. You've got to start him in the run. I don't care what it is, even if they stretch it out. It just gets defenses playing on their heels. At the last series, after he got knocked down, he came back in. One of those running plays on the zone read was the difference, and it just sparked the offense. Inside handoff and a little cutback by Darius Jackson to gain four on the play. Man, I tell you, that T.J. Ricks in the middle linebacker, six foot, 226 pounds, number 47. He really plays well with that linebacker position, flowing, keeping them shoulders squared in the line of scrimmage. Play should have gone for more, but 47 sitting at home taking care of business on the inside. He was a starter last year, had 80 tackles. Bell to throw, look out. 
He but loses the ball. And you can't, you can't, once it's out down, you can't advance the fumble, but a fumble recovery by the Monarchs nonetheless. Yeah, Malik Johnson comes on the blitz, and this is just a quick pass play here. And again, quarterback Reggie Bell, number 10, you've got to get rid of the football on this play. He's designed to set it up, look like you're going to have a jet sweep action, but he held on to the ball, and linebacker Malik Johnson just comes on the delayed blitz. Here, you've got to get rid of the ball now. He doesn't, and again, it looked like Wide receiver that time wasn't looking for it. There's the fumble on the play. Great field position here by Old Dominion. So Bell really never saw him coming. I know Shane Zimenez was the guy to fall on the ball. And again, that route looked like it took too long to develop. Quarterback held on the ball. That ball's got to be gone now. Well, they're pounding on it. Boy, all of a sudden, that Ooh. offensive line Ooh. of the Monarchs is, I mean, they're pushing the defensive line of the Eagles, four or five yards back. 287 in the center. Tyler Burns, 65. He weighs as much as the world does. Fisher at left, 317. Or massive humanity. Gain of eight. And there goes Lowry again. He'll have the first down. Down Coach. to the 16-yard line. Coach decided, let's make this physical. Remember that song? Remember that? Yeah, yeah. You gonna sing that for me a little no, bit? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. We chase our audience. I start singing. <laughs> that was tipped at the line. And again, in that case especially, Bentley looked like he just it, really telegraphed that pass. He did telegraph the pass, but I just think he has, even on that short, on that quick set, he has a little bit of time to just move a little bit. That time, nice young terms I'm on the leap. That Jeremiah Harris, number 90, good job on timing and tipping that ball. The quarterback just gets a little antsy sometimes. Second and 10 from the 16. Lowry. Hit hard right at the line. Is that Zappone in there? Yep, it's on 43. He closed quick on that, too. I thought that play was going to get better yardage. Going behind Fisher, number 70 that time, inside and off. But Zappone closed the door quickly at the factory. That was a ball. Zappone, the quarterback of the defense. You could see him looking down at his play sheet, making the call. Maybe backside shoulder throw in the end zone again. That's what they're looking at. That's and right. that's pass interference. No chance against David Washington. Is that Pace? 5'10? Yeah. Daquan Pace at 5'10 against David Washington, who's 6'3. Well, they list him 6'3. But he jumps. Foul in the end zone. Ball be placed at the two yard But look at the strength of David Washington. Watch on the outside, and again, we look at that backside short. Look at the comfort level. That ball sails a little bit, but how about the leaping ability of David Washington? I mean, they, they give him at 6'3", Dave, but I think he's more about 6'4". Mm -hmm. Well, he jumps like he's a center in the NBA. I mean, he could dunk the ball easily. Lowry walks into the end zone for the touchdown, and we're an extra point away from being tied. Now, I'll tell you what, Tyler Burns, nice job on the block. Take a look at those with two Zach Pascal getting involved, too, on the block. Watch big number 65 close the door, squash it there, and then there's Zach Pascal, number six. He finishes also, too. But I'll tell you what, Nick Clark at the center. Look at the feet. Look at the feet. Continue the move, folks. Take your man into the end zone. Give credit to the center that time. Finishing his block, that's what opened up for the touchdown run. Brand new game. It looked like when Eastern Michigan scored here in the third quarter, they had taken command. But back-to-back -back scores by Lowry, and now the extra point. And we start again. Tied at 24 as Ray Lowry runs behind that massive offensive line of Old Dominion. Yeah, massive humanity in the middle of the big boys getting it done. Stunned faces here in Ypsilanti as Old Dominion has just turned this game on a dime with back-to-back -back scoring drives that each were under two minutes and both capped off by Ray Lowry touchdowns. I'll tell you what, in the first half, we were so complimentary with Figueroa and Harris and Dunlap and Zappone and Ebay. But here in the third quarter, I'll tell you what, the big men up front from Old Dominion have decided to put this game on their back, and they've done a good job of winning the war in the trenches.
Well, we'll see now how Eastern Michigan recovers. High end over end kick. Russell. Got a burst of speed to the outside. And Russell forced out by the kicker at the 40 yard line, and there's a penalty flag down. CJ Bradshaw, number three that time, working on the outside, our number five. It looked like he did lost some contain on that. And again, a great field position here for Eastern Michigan. This third suit, what, the first two drives at the 30, now you're out almost the midfield, plus you got a penalty here. I think they'll be past midfield once they get going, unless the penalty is against Eastern Michigan. Personal foul on the kicking team, number 45. Late hit out of bounds. 15 yard penalty for sound. Well, Russell has lit a fire into this special teams unit with some good returns. Yeah, they look just working on the sidelines here. Let's see where the hit takes place. And it looks like there was some a little extracurricular activities. And I'm not really sure, maybe some talking afterwards, or I didn't really see much. Miller pushes the ball to the 47 of the Monarchs. So Reggie Bell has had two turnovers today, an interception and a fumble. And a handoff here to Shaq Van, and he takes it to the 41. Yeah, Poncho Barnwell that time, defensive end, just working back down inside, looking at quarterback. Nice read that time by, Bar by, Reggie, by Reggie Bell, the quarterback on that zone read on the handoff. Ball takes outside, six-yard game. I think this is an important juncture of the game for Eastern Michigan. And Van able to spin around and yeah. get it down close to a first down. Folks, TJ Ricks right here just saved the touchdown. Number 47, your inside linebacker. He doesn't make this tackle the way that play set up. That's going for six. Nice job on his part. Quick hitter to the outside. That'll be a first down. Not much more, but they got what they needed. The pass is caught by Isaiah Fuller. And the one thing about Reggie Bell, I think he's got to improve on is just delivery of the ball. Sometimes it's just so soft, there's not much other. Other times he puts some mustard on it. So, again, just that consistency in the delivery. Kind of a short arm delivery. Yeah, exactly. Van. Well, he was looking for some extra yards. And Van, that nice job again. Zone read, simple that time. Defensive ends up the field. Also linebacker Malik Johnson on the outside working up the field. So again, they're just going to come back inside. There's a natural hole there right in the B gap for running back to take. This time Bell. Tried to run a little fold that time. Got some penetration. But still Bell just showed you that athletic ability of his the quick feet able to stop on a dime jumps back to the right side gets positive yards when it should have been lost yep and it brings up a third and a short two who else to bring in but darius jackson number six six foot i'm gonna say about 220 pounds mm -hmm. so we've got two bulldozer backs and van and jackson going to throw. Oh, no, they're not. Bell takes that one giant step forward and gets it all the way down to the 17. Yeah, and I think that was designed all the way quarterback run on this. They have play action fake set up on it. Watch Reggie Bell turn his back completely on this play. Doesn't really even set his feet. Just takes off all the way. Nice job on Tuttle, though, coming across the middle. That's what it Pulled the linebacker, created a nice running lane for quarterback on that one. He might have been looking for something wide open there on a third two, yeah, but when it's not, not there, there, you got to go. Boom, he's gone. And they move the chains, first and ten. Now Jackson. Again, they're finding some room to run inside, right over center, right over right or left guard. And this one goes down to the 17, a gain of five. And zone blocking is so important for the running back to be able to keep shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. You've got to have that vision because you're letting people just flow one way, and then it's up to you to find a crease. Nice job by Darius Jackson that time. Great job on the cutback. Boy, an important drive for the Eagles after watching the Monarchs score two touchdowns in a row. Take the tempo back. 
Jackson again this time. Powerful run. He powers his way down to the six. And yeah, nice job on that split zone again on that kick out block. There's Jackson. It just shows nice patience. Good vision. Works back to the left side. And the big machine's rolling. First and goal at the six. Quiz toss. Boy, that could almost been pass interference. The timing of that play was interesting as Martez Simpson was hitting the receiver as he was catching the ball. He's exactly right, and you can see that. Reggie Bell not very happy on that play. He just takes it and it goes immediately outside. And Martez Simpson, if he decided he wanted to go for that ball, that could have been going the other way for six. And that was on uh, the freshman Eddie Doherty. The timing, I guess, was perfect. So now backs him up a couple of yards. It's second and goal at the eight. Give him a chance to throw the ball into the end zone. Second yard, second and eight. Take a chance to the corner. Play clock down to one. Nice toss. Big hit. Incomplete. Wow. Yeah, but give credit to Shadow Williams on this play. Sam Browning is wide open on the smash route, working to the outside. But watch Shadow Williams, 45, come on the blitz. And that's what not allowed the quarterback to throw that ball. And then the decisive hit on the outside. Whoa, about, talk about rattling bones, folks. Kevin Davis never Woo. really had control. And then Falante Misher, he lowered the boom. Misher took the D out of Davis on that play. Woo. So now third and goal at the eight. Toss into the end zone, touchdown! <laughs> Dustin Creel, his second touchdown of the day. And great patience by Reggie Bell on that play, folks. Working against C.J. Bradshaw that time. Creel just kind of worked into the end zone, to the back of the end zone. Kind of ran like almost a curl, used his body to create that space. And watch Reggie Bell get some time in the pocket this time. Gets stepped to his right and makes a decisive throw. Creel goes up for the pigskin, comes away with six. Point after is good. What an exciting third quarter play, our fourth touchdown of the third quarter. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Reggie Bell that time steps to his right, almost walks right into the pressure. But watch him on this throw. Watch how decisive he is on this release. Take a look at it again. You see the blitz coming in the middle. He steps to the right, but it's a short arm release, but the ball came with a tighter spiral. And that's what I'm talking about. It seems like sometimes it comes out quicker, other times it doesn't. Here he takes off. Nice job on the run. Start of the drive. Allowed him to get six on the board. Well, that throw, you're right. Bell, sometimes he kind of floats the ball. Yeah. That one, he had a little zip the on it, ball. and the only guy that had a chance to catch it was Creel. And he has that short arm release, so that's something, if you're going to have that short arm release, then that's something you're going to have to work on. Make sure that every time that ball comes out with the spin, that allowed Creel to come back and get that catch. And they say Creel is coming off an ACL tear, not as quick as he was as a freshman, but he is still very valuable as a receiver, and you can see right there, great hands. And again, Reggie Bell stepped right into a blitz on that, stared down the gun barrel, and didn't, didn't bother him at all, but delivered a strike. This kick's gonna go through the back of the end zone. Out of the gray map, into the green pea suit. Well, let's look at again at Reggie Bell. Again, you have the blitz in the middle. There's the pressure. Now Reggie Bell has to step to his right, kind of hop, but then still delivers the ball. Nice job on Creel that time, going up for the pigskin. And that one, and again, C.J. Bradshaw, really no chance. Looks like he stumbled and covered. But again, I just thought that ball came out a little bit tighter on the spin. Don't forget to vote for this week's Player of the Week on americansportsnet.com. With Rich Baldinger, I'm Dave Armstrong. Glad to have you with us here at the factory. And the Eagles cap nice a very line. important drive. Great now line. here comes Lowry again. Can't stop this guy right now. And I'm going to tell oh, you why, because when you get a hat on hat, that time they got right on eBay. Burns, he gets there, and also Clark again, and Lowry so adept in that little sidestep, able to find a hole. And now Bentley to throw, that's right on target. 
Boy, when you can run the ball as effectively as the Monarchs have, it opens things up for Bentley. Only rushed three that time. Quarterback had some to time, and he delivered that ball right over the middle. Completed to Duhart across midfield. First down at the 47 of the Eagles. Lowry. Wow. He stretches across that. Oh, I mean, it, it, that ball, I mean, how he finds those holes. I mean, he looks all the way to the left, comes back to the right, finds a crease. Looks like the handoff was kind of mismanaged, but Lowry still turned that into positive yards. Yeah, they got Buborn playing at that right tackle position, Old Dominion. You've got the over at the left tackle, you have number 78 on that play. Garcia now, oh, it's so second half, he's playing the left tackle position. <laughs> Quick toss to the outside, poked away. Good play defensively by Pace. And I'm going to tell you what, right there on that play, Shula Bentley's looking for the flag. But the officials are telling me, you know what? We're going to let you go because Garcia on the left tackle just got away with a hole. And so the officials are like, well, I'll give you some. <laughs> and they take away some from you also, too. <laughs> Third and eight. What's. They bring the pressure and a nice spin move by Duhart to get the first down. No, on spin motion that time behind Duhart. And how about quarterback just standing in the pocket here now? Better in terms of protection up front, integrity of the pocket in the middle. Quarterback now can deliver the ball out quickly. He finds Duhart again on that drag route, just kind of waits if we have an injury on the field. Yeah, we do. We have a. Eagle down at the 40 yard line. And you saw quarterback and you saw coach on the side to get the call from you. That's Jason Beck as he comes limping off. They're starting safety. And Shula Bentley is going to say going to the sideline. Him and coach were happy because he said, you know what? You stood in against the blitz. You found your receiver. You had to coming across the middle too hard that time. Number nine, first down on the play. Exciting first day of college football on the American Sports Network. And coming up after our game tonight. We're going to take you to Louisiana Tech in Ruston, Louisiana. And that's the next game at 7 o'clock Eastern here on ASM. We might even try to slide in a little bit of the Rice-Wagner game, which started late today because of a weather delay. Boy, another good defensive play, and all of a sudden, Daquan Pace has made back-to-back -back good plays defensively. And I thought maybe he would have gone to Nick England, who was the inside receiver on that one, because coverage was tight. England was on the inside, number seven, the number two receiver. The quarterback side going on the outside, lost on the play. Quick toss to the flat. What a block on the outside. Oh. Good job, though, working through that block by Geraldo. Is that David Washington on the outside, number 10 on that block, David? Yeah. I'll tell you what, if he's not catching the ball. Or jumping. Over, yeah, I mean, he absolutely, nice job in a stock block. Way to help out your buddy. Well, another third and long. Looks like they're bringing the blitz again. Now they back off a little bit. And the handoff is to Lowry, who gets the first down. And they set up a trips formation that time. People walk, linebackers walked out inside because you have some success on the ball. Now you come back in on the little zone handoff. And again, that ball, I mean, they just collapsed the whole left side of that defensive line. And that's why that play just opened up. One of the things we haven't done a lot today, Baldy, is call out the name eBay. So obviously, Old Dominion doing a good job at stopping him. Oh boy, there's a face mask if ever there was one. Yeah, that's for sure. And you're right, and I'll tell you what, Old Dominion can talk with their coaches. They said we have to get a hat on eBay. We've got to get up on him. He flows so well to the ball. They've done a masterful job First of sustaining foul. the block. Face mask on the defense, number 29. Penalties at the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Jalen Williams, who's taken the place of Jason Beck, who went out with that injured ankle. And right here, he just yanks down Marquise Little. I'll tell you what, doing some cosmetic surgery on that play. So that makes it first and goal at the seven. Pistol formation here. Got single coverage on to the right side. Lowry. 
dancing around and then hit down at the five after a gain of two. And I'll tell you what, they're just pounding 33 right now. He's earning his money out there in the field, folks. Pistol formation again, just working inside in that eight gap, getting a few yards. And it's just smash now football up front. Old Dominion down in the red zone, looking to put points on the board again. Old Dominion three for three in the red zone today. Getting it done, that's where you have to. Second and goal at the five. Lowry, by the way, 166 yards on the ground. Bentley to throw to the back of the end zone, way too long. And again, quarterback and wide receiver that time. Wide receiver on the outside, number nine, Jonathan Duhart. He read it as, hey, I'm just going to run the slant because the way the coverage was over the top, quarterback doesn't see it that way. So he decides just air mill. Third and goal at the five, Baldy. The way Lowry is run, the run isn't out of play here, is it? No, it's not. But again, I just think where you see coverage right now, watch how they've got linebackers up tight. I might even just come back to the right side again here in single coverage. Now they drop the linebackers back, and Lowry does try to run for it, back looking the for edge. the corner, and he's in. His third touchdown of the day. Jeremiah Harris, like the right defensive end, closed down. Somebody lost contain on the right side. So if he's working inside, take a look at number nine on that on that side there. He gets pinned in, gets hooked. That was just a great block over there. And also, too, eBay got hooked in. And number 42 on that one, Derek Williams. Nice job by Garcia, the left tackle. He also got a good double team. That's what sealed that edge. So Lowry has touchdown runs of 54 yards, two yards, and now five yards. And an extra point away from tying it again. So here we are at 31 all. Remember, folks, it was 17-10 at halftime. And each team has just gone crazy offensively here in the third quarter. And that's just a great double team by Garcia. Again, he got to eBay on that block. And also, as I talked about, Jeremiah Harris got sealed inside, too. But the one thing I'm seeing out of Old Dominion in the second half, I talked about their offensive line changing, moving all these components around. Very efficient run blocking at the point of attack. They've had some issues in pass protection, and that's going to be a natural when you move new people in in terms of getting communication. Here, the second half, the whole idea was, hey, we got to make this game physical. Let's what we do. Let's do what we do well. And Larry has done very good in terms of reading his keys and getting in for the touchdown. Boy, his coach. Bobby Wilder and his offensive coordinator Brian Scott is to be thrilled right now with Lowry who has rushed 24 times for 171 yards and three touchdowns. They have dominated up front Old Dominion here in the second half. Absolutely have physically opposed their will on the defense of East Michigan. Three touchdowns for Old Dominion this half, two for Eastern Michigan. And there goes Russell again. Again, good field position up to the 32-yard line. And again, it just looks like for me, Eastern Michigan in the second half, they've gone back to the issues that were causing problems last year. Out of position, getting out leveraged, not seeing blocks and knowing how to play them. And it's cost them on some big running plays, as you talked about the stats in the second half. Mm -hmm. One of the things Eastern Michigan is trying to do defensively is force three turnovers a game and also stopping the run, especially in this game. They've not been able to stop the run here today. Yeah, I think they've kind of backed off, too, on Shula Bentley in terms of bringing pressure against him. First half, a lot of success. Second half, you're not, not, not really getting to him, allowing him to get comfortable in the pocket. Empty backfield. Well, it's never empty when you have Bell back there running, and he only gets a yard or two. But again, it forces that defense. It's like throwing a deep pass over the middle. You force their safeties to have to respect the run. I mean, stay back, and everything can't come up on the run. Even on that play, it might have not been the best gain, only a couple yards in the play. But now, of course, linebackers think, okay, now we, okay, he's still involved in the running game. How does that open back up inside? Well, let's take another look as Bell goes down again. Remember, he got his bell wrong earlier. Let's see what happens here. And just a sign quarterback keeper on this one. Looking outside, got his shoulder grab. And then he just got, looks like he got sandwiched. Mm -hmm. In that play. Take a look at it again, just coming across the middle. And he did, he got. Well, if he has to come out, Brogan Roback isn't exactly a guy that has no playing experience. Roback one for one in this game, and Roback a guy who has made some starts in his career. Yeah, he took a shot. It looked like came uh, came up on that play. 
that Shadow Williams came up late and mm -hmm. delivered this blow to the shoulder, and it looks like he grabbed his right shoulder a little bit. And some concern here now over Reggie Bell, the talented sophomore quarterback of the Eagles. And they'll be especially careful here because this is the second time today that he has been shaken up this way. And you see Roback. So they're bringing Bell back over to the sideline. Now there's only 21 seconds left here in the third quarter. So he'll get a little bit of a breather. I think he got sandwiched just on that yeah. play. Yeah. What Shadow Williams come up on this play? And that's the, the first time. Hit. Yep. He just got squashed. That was from Coward. Coward. Yeah. Yep. Late hit. And then this one, he just got sandwiched. So they're going to run the play clock down or the game clock after the timeout. You can see all the Eastern Michigan players raising four fingers because that's where we're going, folks. We're heading to the fourth quarter of play in an awesome football game. It's 31 31 from the factory. 31 all as we head to quarter number four. Who is going to close the gap here in the fourth quarter? Who wins this one? It's a shootout in the factory. Come back and watch the fourth quarter. The jaw of Reginald Bell. And he's kind of feeling the, the yeah. jaw right there, making sure that it's not broken. Shadow Williams, the one who came up, I think he was the one who delivered the hit. I thought he got him on the shoulder, but it must have been up higher and everything happened when he followed through. Shadow Williams is six foot, 216 pounds, number 45. They have played a bone crushing hit. So now Brogan Roback comes back into this game. Remember, he's one for one in the game for 10 yards and immediately wants to throw again. And this one he threw away because he saw the coverage coming. Martez Simpson. Yeah, Simpson would have had a pick six if he threw that one on target. Yeah, Martez Simpson on the outside. He closes quick, doesn't he? Nice job there in terms of work, knowing you, who you have in coverage. Good place for the quarterback to go with that ball. Roback has some experience. In fact, he's made five starts in his career. Nowhere to go. They haven't really gone vertically with the ball today. It's more of a short passing game, bubble screens, tunnel screens. Let's see if they look work the ball down the field here on third and long. Low snap. Roback steps up. Uh oh. God. Look out from behind. Jimenez. Oh, Shane Zimenez with the sack. Yeah, Zimenez, I tell you, working against Andrew Wiley. Great job on his part. Watch on your right side. Number 7-2 initially gets his set, but stops his feet. Quarterback's got to understand with the speed off the edge at that time. Got to get rid of the football, but I would say my right tackle, don't stop your feet. If you've opened up a little too soon, you've got to widen the pocket, turn it into a run block. Steady stop allows an easy edge for that that's end to get to the sack. Last year, the Eagles gave up 35 sacks. That's their first today. So now the punt. Barnes gets it away. Short punt this time. And running up to get it little. Kind of a dangerous play. But he makes a good play. Because if he lets that ball drop, remember the other one when Creel let it drop. And it went down to the six yard line. This time, Little doesn't let it drop. And great field position for Old Dominion. You're exactly right. And here's an offense that's been unstoppable in the second half. Now it's going to get the ball at their own 42 yard line. What do you think they're going to do? You think number 33 might get another handoff again? He might. Look at the last four drives, Baldy. All resulting in scores for Old Dominion. And they're doing it on the ground for the most part. Those three touchdowns are all touchdown runs from Ray Lowry. Coming right back inside. So I thought, wow. And this time it's Jeremy Cox. Just a little change of pace. They bring in the true Stop freshman Cox. Move for the right tackle that time through the key block on that play. Trips formation, only five men in the box. Come back into the run. Here it is again. Is this a case, Baldy, where that big, massive offensive line of the Monarchs just wearing down the defense? And again, it's just because of formation, too. You've got trips formation to the left, so now you've got to walk a linebacker outside, protecting the inside. Only five men in the box, so now i got five on five. That's a win every time the offense, Old Dominion reads it as that. Now they're just going to pound the run. Let's see if now they come back out with the pass. This linebacker's now walked in a little bit. Nope. Stay with that run. 
And because the linebacker came back in, nowhere for Cox to go. Yeah, but that was a better play that time by Jeremiah Harris. When he closed down, he kept his shoulders square. Harris that time, much better this time. Watch number 90, Jeremiah Harris. Watch him close from that right defensive end. See how he separates in the block. See how he keeps his shoulders square. Now he comes back in on the block. And also, too, Anthony Zappone on the inside. So backs him up a couple. It's now third and six. Now six in the box for Eastern Michigan. Looks like they want to come with a blitz. Yeah, it looks like they changed on protection. Quick toss oh, and almost a, a one-handed grab by Washington. Give credit to Nick Clark, 63. Late at the moment that time on protection. But that ball just thrown a little bit too far. David Washington, number 10, couldn't quite come away with that spectacular catch. Take a look at it right here on the outside. One-handed, can't quite pull it in. Quarterback that time felt a little pressure in the middle. So that's why that ball sailed on him a little bit. A little bit, but boy, he shows a good strong oh, arm. Oh, he does. Right? He's got a strong arm. He will deliver it. He gets that comfort level. Well, the Monarchs forced to punt for the first time in the last five possessions. And a little pooch kick. Creel will call for the fair, fair catch at the 14. And that's the thing. Me and you were talking up there. Shula Bentley gets comfort playing time on the field, folks. Last year he sat on the bench and watched. This year you got to get out there and play in the heat. Getting better as the game goes. Reggie Bell remains over on the trainer's table. They're checking him out. He keeps checking out his jaw. They're checking out all kinds of different things. He's talked to maybe three, four, five different trainers here to see if he can come back in this game. But for right now, he is on the sidelines and being replaced by Brogan Roback, who is the backup quarterback for the Eagles. And I just think physically that shot you saw right there, he looks a little glassy-eyed. He took a shot in the jaw, Reggie Bell. And you wonder now with the concussion rules at all levels, it isn't like it was in the day. Here, they even think there's an issue with that. You saw him doing all the nerve checks, his hand strength, ankle and everything's jaw, make sure everything's okay. Well, a quick snap here. And a carry out to the 20 yard line. And I'll tell you what, there is Jackson, number six. If he's not running the football, he's blocking. What a consummate player. It's the type of guys you need. You build teams around people like him. Bantam takes it for seven yards. Wow, the cut. Oh, Jackson up to the 30. Right behind the fly motion. Great job on the timing on that play. And there's Jackson just not going to be stopped. Number six. I like the way this guy plays. Look at him just running between the tackles. And again, nice job there. Turn to the fake. Coming back inside the big game. Waiting for a little traffic to clear. Van takes it up to the 33 or 34 yard line. Yeah, and then when Darian Terrell, Terrell, excuse me, number 71, pulling around on that play. Not a lot to block, but still, though, big man getting around. 6'4", 323 pounds. Follow an 18-wheeler, you'll find a little crease to jump into. Second down and six yards to go. Really running the ball well now. That's another first down. Jackson can't be stopped, and that puts him over 100 yards on the day. 14 carries for 106 yards and two touchdowns. You got Hercom number 50 pulling on this one, the left guard. Watch him get around real quick. Nice job of going getting to the second level. And then back live, Jackson again across midfield, still on his feet, and all the way down to the 44. Dave, a lot of arm tackling right now for Old Dominion on defense. Some fatigue on their play, it looks like. And there is Jackson taking advantage of it. They just made wholesale changes, Old Dominion. They brought five new guys in on defense. And that is the reason why you've got to be eight deep, nine deep, because you've got to rotate these guys. You're rushing the pass so they get fatigued easily. Could be a double pass. Halfback pass. Downfield, and oh, man. Austin Stone was wide open, and right now Doherty, he's wondering why wasn't that completed? Well, I'm going to tell you what, there's not a quarterback controversy here. 
Dart has the chance, but again, feels a little bit of pressure coming from linebacker Malik Johnson. He can't deliver the ball. And believe me, when he goes to the locker room afterwards today, they're going to say, hey, you're in the quarterback drills from now on. Second and ten. Good toss. Boy, that had some zip on it. Good play from Roback. Roback to Doherty, and nice job on his point in terms of he got time in the pocket, let the route develop, came to his third read, Doherty that time for first down. Well, they're really going up tempo right yeah, now. Yeah, they are the up tempo, and it has fatigued this defense here of Old Dominion. Jackson gets a couple. It'll be second and eight. You see wholesale changes defensively here for Old Dominion. Fatiguing right now defensively up front in this hurry up offense has proved to be a, an equalizer here on this drive. Temps in the 80s, humidity probably above 50% today. They read that one well. Nice job on the linebacker blitz run through that time. Tuttle had nowhere to go. No, that's, excuse me, on that with that. With Shane Zimenez, number 98, closed yep. from that defensive end position that time, really stayed at home, got in on that play. Redshirt freshman, O'Shane Zimenez. Yeah, you can see him and Tim Ward, they definitely got potential. Just young guys learning about the game at the next level. But here right now, Brogan, I'll tell you, Roback, the quarterback, number four, doing a good job of moving this offense around. Mixed it up, but to hurry up, it has fatigued the defense. And a big third down play here, third and 12. They need to reach the 24. Calls on the line. Toss down the middle of the field. Oh, oh almost a touchdown grab. In and out of the hands of Doherty. And I'll tell you what, give quarterback that time. Broken Roback so much credit. He felt the pressure. Zimenez, number 98, coming around the edge. Look at this. Working against the left tackle. Watch it crushed by him. And he comes all the way, gets a hand in there late. And Darty just can't come away with the catch. That was right in the bread basket. And you know why? He didn't extend his hands, caught the ball against his chest. And didn't extend his arms. Why didn't come away with the catch? Bounced off. Mm. Now they're going to try a long field goal here for Mulder. It's on its way. It's got the distance. And it's good. good. Wow. 52 yards. What a kick. And I'm sitting there going, why aren't you punting this football? You're going to take a chance at this point in the game. Special teams, big return to the second half, and now a field goal. Put the pigskin through the uprights. Oh, you love those field goal kickers. Those kickers do so much, they make the difference. You gotta love the spirit of Chris Creighton, the second year head coach of the Eagles. He goes for a 52 yard field goal made by Dylan Mulder, which ties for the longest field goal in EMU history. Well, you know, it comes a time when you want to change a program around that a coach is going to get an opportunity during a game to challenge his team, and he's always going to get a chance to challenge himself. Coach Creighton decides to make go for the 52-yard field goal. It happens. It changes the whole dynamics of the game. Defensively now, can Eastern Michigan capitalize? Nice long drive too, Baldy, for Eastern Michigan. Did that give the Eagles defense enough time to rest? Because the Monarchs have been running through them here in the second half. Yeah, they have. I mean, in that, that last series, they did a really nice job in formation of trip and getting linebackers moving, coming back inside and pounding the football here. And also Shuler Bentley. We've talked about him since the middle of the second quarter. He's gotten more comfortable at the quarterback position. See so what he can do. Hey, fans, if you're on Facebook, and there are a billion people out there that are on Facebook, well, why not like the ASN Facebook page? Check us out at Live on ASN. That says a million, but there's more than a billion. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. They go right back to the run. Why not? It's been successful here in the second half. Lowry, by the way, 
has three touchdowns, all of them here in the second half. Better by McLean that time, but also two linebacker eBay that time, not getting washed out. Comes up, uses the form, doesn't get washed out of the pile, gets in and limits the game to only about four yards, but I'll take it every time offensively. Again, we haven't called eBay's name a lot, and that's by design for Old Dominion. They've tried to take him out of this game. Derek Williams that time, number 42. He's the player. Better job with your hands there. Much better job coming off the block. Initial stymie with your hands. Now staying at home. Lowry couldn't cut back. Wanted to come all the way outside. Nowhere to go. Third and four. Tight coverage on the bottom. Bentley. The pocket collapses. Bentley sacked for the first time. Bentley sacked. But I'll tell you what, Derek Williams, he put the afterburners on going against Garcia. Watch him work on the outside of the left tackle, right, left shoulder. Take a look at it. Watch him come. Left tackle, you've got to read that quicker. Your guard can take care of McLean. You've got to get to your guy. You gave a short field, and here it is, number 42. Take a look at it, Derek Williams. He reads it. Maybe he's going to get himself some right now. He got himself a quarterback on that play. Three and out for the Monarchs. No, I thought maybe Ziffer might throw that ball the way he was running what with a it. Kick. Look at this. After it lands, it goes another 30 yards. And I, I'm going to tell you what, that's Creel's second one, and I think he could have fielded that. There was nobody downfield on that, and again, he allows that ball to go. It travels all the way back to the 14-yard line. So again, give him credit. Here's the sack, folks. Derek Williams, 42. Turn the afterburners on, maybe yet. Download now. Derek Williams still pumped up over on that sideline, and why not? The Eagles force a three and out from the Monarchs. However, a 62-yard punt by Ziffer has backed the Eagles up to their own 14-yard line. Big, important drive for both these teams right now with 6.54 remaining in the game. And I just thought Creel should have fielded that ball. He had the chance. There was no pressure. You can't let it roll back to your own 14-yard line. So it broke when you do a quarterback. Those rugby-style kicks are really effective because they're really tough. They're low, and once they hit the ground, they just start running. And I'll tell you what, you know he's a player. He got one of the late hits, but this Rashad Coward in the defensive line yeah. for Old Dominion, 6'6", 307. I, I'll, I'll tell you, when he starts in one direction, you're not stopping that guy. I mean, he, he is just a beast in the middle. No gain there by Jackson, second and ten. Look one way, toss the other way, and a gain of about three yards on the play by Fuller. Another one of those defensive tackles inside, Boomi Rotimi, 58, 6'4", 280 pounds, folks. We're going to get a call on the field, but I, you know, I don't know if we have a chance to show you, but... Boomy, number 58, what hustle on his part. Started inside, pressure quarterback, ran, turned around, ran 20 yards down the field, getting on the tackle. One of the great names in college football, too. Boomy Rotimi. Third and eight. Three-man front this time. Watch the people moving around and everything, trying to create confusion up front. And they do, they run the twist in the middle. Going to get right tackle, maybe on a hold. Roback stays in bounds. And they're going to roll him out at the 25, and it's a first down. What a run by Roback. Take a look initially here, and I thought they were going to get Wiley for the hold, the right tackle. He gets pushed, grabs Jersey on that one against Rotimi. But I'll tell you what, nice job by Roback. I'll tell you what, you talk about having a presence where he's at on the field, scoops for the first down. If the Eagles go on to win this game, that play right there yeah. might be one of the biggest plays of the game. And they go right back to the run with Darius Jackson. And again, right now, the Monarchs are keying on the run game, knowing that the Eagles are trying to get as much out of this as they can with regards to the clock. And again, this is why, as I said, you know, it looks like your hands on the hips right now. This defensive line up front, Old Dominion, looks like gasping for some air, rushing the quarterback a lot of times. The snap goes right to Bantam. 
Tries to stay in bounds. Looks like a late flag comes out as well. And Shadow Williams on the outside that time. Okay, he was going to get cut down. I think we might have a hold on the play. Mm -hmm. On the outside, it looked like Shadow Williams got held on that play because he was going to make the tackle. And believe me, this is oh, the call. the offense, number three. Ten-yard penalty, second down. Dave, I was going to say, with all this spread offense and these jet motions and these rushing the passer so much, that's why at every level when you talk to the coaches now, high school, junior college, college pros, they all said we've got to have depth in our defense line because these guys are running 30-yard sprints. You know, four or five plays, you got to get them out and get some fresh legs out Right. There. Almost becomes like a hockey team. Exactly. Next group over the glass. Second and 17 now. Quick hitter, Creel. Hit right after he catches the ball, but he takes it back to the 25, the original line of scrimmage. I tell you, we're going to get a chance later in this drive, but I think when we watch Brogan Roback throw this football, nice job of that ball coming right over his ear, and the ball really comes out. I mean, he puts some heat on that football. Came through in a big way. Last time, third and long. Let's see what he does here. Third and 11. Pick up the TT stunt. Toss to Jackson. He is able to get it out to the 32-yard line, but Ricks hangs on and forces a punt. Yeah, Malik Jackson also take, take a look at We got a little twist going on in the middle. Quarterback feels the heat, steps up, and this is where I like to see just his throwing motion. It's kind of a little short on, but again, it's right over his ear. Get some pressure. That's what forced him maybe not to be able to put much on the football. And now defensively, give credit to that TJ Ricks and also Malik Johnson. Game-saving tackle on that drive right there. Little goes back to his own 25-yard line. Barnes has boomed a couple of nice punts in this game. The clock will be at around three minutes when the Monarchs get the ball back. Each team has all of their timeouts remaining. Not his best kick. Little has to let it go, and it dances out of bounds at the 24. So we got a timeout. 3.02 remaining. A three. Old Dominion head coach Bobby Wilder has been in this position before. In fact, last year, his Monarchs came from behind four times to win it on the last play of the game. But that was with Taylor Heineke, a quarterback. Now it's Schuler Bentley, the redshirt freshman. Can he pull off the magic for Old Dominion, or will Eastern Michigan start with an important home victory? A little pressure coming. Bentley dances around that and then finds a wide open Nick England. And how about the movement in the pocket that time? You talk about one play here, Demonstrating about a quarterback rowing up in front of us during a game. Schuler Bentley says, I've got to make a play. Great movement within the pocket. Finding a throwing lane. Finds the receiver wide open downfield. Gets his own defense. A 30-yard pass play down to the 46. Right back to the run. And a dog pile right at the point of attack. And no room to run at all for Lowry. Yeah, Eastern Michigan just put the cinder blocks up on that play. There's nobody going to break that wall down. In case you're wondering, Satchel Ziffer, the kicker, his longest field goal a year ago, 46 yards. Let's see if they work the middle of the field again, Dave. Safeties are wide. They got it. Oh! And it is incomplete. Almost intercepted. He had Zach Pascal on this post time, wide open. Look at the middle of the field, it's there. The quarterback has time. He sets his feet, though. No, I'll tell you what, he felt a little bit of hair pressure from Jeremiah Harris. But I'll tell you what, give Pascal credit for coming back, coming to defensive back, knocking the guy down so he can't intercept. Jason Beck almost with a huge interception. It would have been a heck of a play off the tip. Incomplete, now third and nine. Lowry, Lowry right up the gut, there he goes, touchdown Lowry, wow! They got it and again perfectly set up, wins formation defensively, they got him out of position again, Eastern Michigan, and today most of the time these big runs are because guys aren't sure where they need to be or they get out leveraged, take a look at it, they're playing pass on this one, and again, 
coming up late on that play, eBay, somebody had to work back inside quicker because I saw number eight, McLean, work out to the B gap. It left the door wide open, easy run for Lowry. 45 yards for Lowry, his fourth touchdown of the day. 223 yards on the ground. And the extra point is good to make it a four-point contest. The comeback kids are at it again as Old Dominion with their first lead of the game. Yeah, just take a look at it from here. It's a little zone read this time. And again, give credit up front there to number 70, Tyler Fisher. He's had a great job, the left guard. But again, it looked like people were out of place because no one's filling back quickly enough. And look at the block on eBay, number 10. Great job on the inside three by Old Dominion. They dominated when they had to. And again, that was set up by Twins formation. Linebackers are wide, came back in quickly with the run. Good job on the touchdown. I don't know who's going to have a better day than Ray Lowry. 223 yards and four touchdowns on the day. Yeah, Eastern Michigan last year struggled in run defense last. And Coach McCaskill said, you know, this year we've got to be better. We have to be in position. We can't get out leverage too many times today. Still, it's the same problem. But on third and nine, are you really expecting a run play? No, you're, you're not. But still, though, if you saw the way they ran the stunt, somebody's got to come back inside, and they weren't. Mm -hmm. And again, eBay on that one, you got to do a better job shedding your block. But again, i got to give credit inside. Clark, Fisher, Tyler Burns. Those three guys inside have been masterful in the second half with their blocks. Low kick. All the way back to the two-yard line. A little bit of elusiveness by Doherty, but he can't get away and he has stopped at the 25 yard line. Yeah, but give credit though too. You know what? When your big guys up front there, great job of coaches, uh, of Old Dominion, deciding let's go with what's been working for us. You got a freshman quarterback. He almost gave away a, a touchdown, interception on the play before. Maybe you go back and see what you can get. And that probably would have been a two down play anyways. That would have been a two down series. So even if you only got four or five yards, you're probably gonna come back and do another running play again. Well, let's see if Rogan Roback can bring the Eagles all the way back. Now playing from behind for the first time in the game. They're going to play off cover, so look for all the short passes underneath. going to be easy pitch and catch. Make the tackle after the catch is made. Make the tackle. That's exactly what they do. The clock keeps running. All three timeouts remaining for the Eagles. And you're forcing now the D offense to make perfect passes, catches. Hopefully, you'll while you get your defense, make sure you wrap up with the person down. Play ends. Over the middle, too high. Stops the clock with 127 remaining. That's the one pass this has broken to Ben in where he's nice job moving around within the pocket, finding a little bit of time, finding that void, but he just kind of airmailed that football. That's like some cramping problems right now for Brandon Addison, one of their corners. So he, Coach Creighton gets a chance to huddle his crew. Dave, I, I try to keep things simple. And one of my leaders, and I had a chance to play many years with John Alt, left tackle. He used to tell me, Richard, if it's above 32 degrees, it's 2-1. So. <laughs> well, Eastern Michigan, from here, they have their longest road trip of the year. They'll head out to Wyoming, and then a couple of home games against Ball State and Army. Then LSU and on to Akron. They don't have an off date until the 21st of November. They play 11 straight, straight out of the shoot. Pretty much what it used to be. Comes the blitz. Third and three, incomplete. And you got to go for it here. Creel couldn't quite hang on and a hit from Misher. And it kind of would give credit to the big guys up front. They picked the blitz up perfectly. Quarterback, you got time. You've got to deliver the ball on that slant. Creel catches it. He's going to run, but you threw it behind his receiver. Yep. Couldn't stop, come back and get the ball. And that's what Roback is selling himself. But you got to have a short memory here. You do right now, buddy. You expect you to make plays. Right now, trying to get the call also to the O-line protection. Who's the rusher? Do we turn loose? I 
That's a first down. Kevin right. Davis up to the 46. There's still hope. Yeah, I'll tell you what, nice job, Rogan Row back that time. Some pressure coming up in the middle, but he's able to just stand in there, kind of maneuvers his feet, delivers the ball right on the money. They stop the clock to move the chains. Now it's running again. Ooh, threw Let that one into traffic. And Tuttle couldn't hang on. Again, it's Misher. I'll tell you what, with Misher, he's on a mission. You run around downfield with number 24 around, buddy. You better be inside an armored vehicle because your body ain't going to survive. Stops the clock, though, with 103 remaining, second and 10. Yeah, cover, man, cover one on this one. You have what we call soft coverage. Look for maybe a quick slant, hitch or something just to move the ball. That could be a first down with that extra effort. That's a nice thrown ball that time. Down low, receiver goes and gets it, comes back up, able to give his feet. Nice job by Chris Strange going down and then making a spin move. That is a first down. Another quick hitter to the outside. And this one actually will lose yards and cost some valuable time. And now timeout. First timeout used by the Eagles. Take a look at Chris Strange on this first down catch. Again, quarterback going through his reads, comes back left, delivers that ball low and tight. But you know what? At wide receiver, Dave, it's simple. It's simple in practice. It's you catch the football, but the play doesn't end. It's what you do afterwards. Mm -hmm. Great job on the protection. You've got to turn and get something. Your buddies are counting on you to get a first down. Nice job by Strange that time. Going down 5'11", 186 hits a catch. I agree with you, but first things first, catch the ball. Exactly right. It's all about catching the football, but that's a better job that time in terms of hands away from the body to make the catch. All right, 46 seconds remaining. It's second and 11, and you have two timeouts remaining. You need a touchdown. You cannot get into field goal range, obviously, with a score and a four-point deficit. You got two timeouts left. What an exciting second half. And you see if the Eagles can mount a comeback. I, I think if the middle of that field is open, you find a way to yeah. get that ball down to the middle field. Yeah, it is the safety, so walk and watch. You, you get time up front for your big guys. You get a chance. That's where I think you can make some damage. You can get some big throws. You've got two timeouts. So even if he makes the catch, right. if you have to, you can call timeout on the play afterwards. Roback, a little pressure. Now he wants to go long, and it's incomplete. And that's a good job of his part, just trying to stay alive on that play. The ball down deep. Good job covering the man up that time. Nowhere to go. Quarterback trying to find anywhere. So third and 11. Yeah, 37 seconds. Still, I think you can work the middle of the field. Now it's going to be, you know, if you can get it, I think you can get there with two timeouts, Dave. You can gain 20 yards on this play, work in the middle, call ahead, call timeout at that point. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have, you know, 25 seconds left to go. Then move the safety back over. Roback scrambling. Now he's got a guy. Can he get to the first down marker? Nope, stopped at the 40. That'll right. bring up a fourth down. You got to take a timeout. What about mission number 24? How about the big hits? But, folks, that might be the play of the game. Right there, that open field tackle on Jackson. Right there, then the plate. Look at it. There's nowhere to go downfield. Quarterback's running for his life. Oh, no, doom on me. My life insurance ain't paid up. I'm getting rid of this thing. And here's Darius Jackson in the open field. But how about Misher coming across? He don't make that tackle. That's probably a touchdown on the play. Misher has made three really big plays on this drive alone. Exactly. So now it all comes down to this, fourth and six. And see, that's why I thought the play on the second down, they, they would have worked something underneath. I don't think you would have put yourself in this position. Instead, they didn't take it. And again, now you put yourself in this fourth down. You've got 25 seconds left to go still. What do we got? Two, no, one timeout left here. I think it, you, you put yourself in a bad position. I think you could have got more on that first, on that second down play. And you would have not, maybe not even had to use a timeout. You could have maybe clocked it or something. All right, who do you target here?
It's a matter of giving you quarterback time. Find out which receiver. He's going to get time out here now. You're going, you're going uh, twins on this? Yes. ODU takes a timeout. And they saw what the Eagles came out in with regards to their formation, and so they want to talk things over. And I'll tell you what, Chris Strange has made some nice catches in this. He made the first down catch. You almost have to begin to look at him also, too. Tuttle on the outside, be a guy. But I'll tell you, Chris Strange has been the guy. He comes away with a few catches. You know, I think if anything, you might want to look at, well, you know what? It's been tough for him because Eastern Michigan hasn't done much in terms of the vertical passing game. So Old Dominion right now is, you know what they're screaming? Bubble screens, tunnel screens, fight off the blocks. Don't get pinned because that's where I think they're going to go. Something short. I don't think they're going to try to go deep because they just haven't had much success. And the one they did, Darty dropped it in the end zone. Right. It all comes down to this for both these teams. So breaking out wide is strange. He's out there along with Cody Tuttle. Safety's going to stay deep, keep everything in front. In the front, make the tackle. Drop five underneath. And not only a tip, but an interception. Wow, what a play by Tim Ward, the true freshman. And we talked about his game in early in the game. Coaches said that, hey, we have got some special people finally on the outside. We struggled last year rushing the passer. Tim Ward, end of the game when you got to make a play. Number 93, all six foot six, 226 pounds. Gets it done. Boy, is he a special looking kid. 6'6", oh. 226 pounds. He's gained 35 pounds since coming to campus. And he just makes a huge play. Not only does he bat the ball down, but he picks it off. Wow. Yeah, just Tim Ward again just working against on the, there. Comes inside, working from that left defensive end. And what a job timing his leap like that. Quarterback just maybe a little pump fake. Get the guy in the air. As you're always told in basketball, don't leave your feet. Quarterback pump fakes a little bit. Guess what? You can throw right underneath him, but Tim Ward gets it done. And now the offensive coordinator gets to call their favorite plays. A oh, kneel down at the end of the game. We, you know, Dave, I wanted to see about this defense of Old Dominion, but give credit. Coward up front, Boomy, uh, Simenez, Ward, all of them. They have got themselves a good rotation of players up front. This is where they had to improve. They got pressure today when they had to. And again, Tim Ward comes away with the biggest play of the game. The Monarchs trailed for most of this contest. They took the lead when Lowry scored from 45 yards out. 38-34 the score where it stands right now. It's their first lead of the game. 14 to nothing to start things for Eastern Michigan. So the Monarchs were playing from behind the entire contest. And they are gonna come out of Ypsilanti 1-0 on the year, and they must feel like they survived a tough test against the Eagles. And yeah, give credit to one, one for the quarterback, the young quarterback coming out as a freshman. You know, everybody said, well, you know what, he was here last year. No, it doesn't matter. He sat on the bench last year with Tyler on the field. And now he had Taylor on the field, excuse me, Heineke, and he had to come out and make some plays today. He got it done when he had to, made some throws. But how about Lowry running the football? Folks, the former lineman, I'm going to tell you, I'm buying the pizzas for Lowry tonight, man. My man got it done running the big skin. Over 200 yards rushing with four touchdowns for Lowry today. So where does Eastern Michigan go from here? I think you have to look at this. I know coaches hate to talk about moral victories, but I think for the Eagles, you have to look at this as a very positive sign. Well, it is a positive sign, but you've also got to learn about this game that it's four quarters. No matter what you did in the first half, you got to do better in the second half. Give credit to Old Dominion. You know what? They got beat up front in the first half. Second half, guess what? They dominated, controlled the game. So defensively, they couldn't get it done. So. Right up front, they got to be able to play with better intensity and better techniques. I thought all of that just disappeared in the second half and it proved costly in the game. Well, you look at Roback and how disappointed he is. He had to come in to play for the injured Reggie Bell and couldn't quite get it done. And he is chastising himself as he goes off this field here today. That's the disappointment of a loss. And you look at the day that Darius Jackson had, he was oh. stellar as well, over 100 yards today for the Eagles with a couple of touchdowns. Well, I'm going to tell you what, you, you wrote back, I mean, listen, you're disappointed, you try to make a play, you, 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 you know, you're there, you're fighting at the very end for something happens. 
You came in in a tough situation. You haven't had any reps here at all in terms of in the off in the summer camp. Try to get it done, but you're all right. I thought this team played better. They played with a better intensity. They came out, but just got to understand you got to do it for 60 minutes. Well, Baldy, when you look at this game and you look at the way that both these teams fought, you got to give Old Dominion so much credit. This is a team now that as they move forward, I think you're starting to get the sense that this is a team that really believes in themselves because now they have five games in the last two years where they've come from behind to win on basically the last play. And we saw that last year down there in the last game against Fuller, Fort Atlantic in the overtime. They were able right. to get it done. And so, I mean, they kicked the field goal. And this guy, number 33, and again, it's all about getting those senior guys. And they had to figure out a way. And, you know, we were talking to coaches this week, and they said last year with Taylor as the quarterback, they always looked at him to make the play. Well, this year they have a freshman. And then guess what? In the second half, that group got together, beginning with the five big guys up front, and they said, you know what? Put it on board our back. Right. We're going to carry this home, and they got it done. And the stronger your run game is, the better and more effective it makes your freshman quarterback. It, exactly, and you saw him get more comfortable yeah. with the game going on. He made some throws. Those backside shoulder throws, you don't do that as a freshman. He did it well. He got a little antsy sometimes, but as I said to you, Dave, until you go on the field, it's like any business, right? Yeah. Until you go out and do it, the young man got better as the game went on. I think if you look at Eastern Michigan, this is a team that's supposed to be the doormat of the MAC, and if that's the doormat, if that's your lower level, if that's the floor, this MAC is really a great conference. Well, start, start with Figaro in the middle, defensive tackle. They've got themselves some guys up on Harris at the defensive end. They find some ways. They can rush the passer and everything. So, you know what, Dave? To get a winning come time times, it's going to challenge you. It's yeah. going to test your heart, your soul. It's going to push you down to the point. Then all of a sudden, you get the one win, and then all of a sudden, you think, wow, that's easy. Well, you know, you remember, you forget how hard it was. These guys will get it done. I still think you have to look at that gutsy call on third and nine, and they send and give the ball to Lowry, and he goes in from 45 yards out for the touchdown. So the final stats on the day, and you look at the rushing yards, almost all of those belong to Lowry. Again, he was just his vision running the football. When you run behind that offensive line, I talked about the inside, the center, both guards. They have got things going. They know how to do it well. And, folks, it's not easy with that zone blocking because you don't get much time in camps anymore. You don't get all the practices. So these guys showed me they did a lot of work in the offseason, and it showed out today in this game. So you look at it, the rushing really was the big difference in this game. And you look at the running backs, both of them having really good days. But Lowry, his was just stellar, it, over 200 yards and four touchdowns. Over the top. But again, when you talk about moral victories, Darius Jackson is a guy you've got to get involved in the offense. I am going to tell you what, he's the guy who sets the tempo. Joining us now, head coach Bobby Wilder. And we were just talking about Ray Lowry, coach. Man, what a day, 223 yards and four touchdowns. Yeah, he, he's special, guys. And uh, you see his balance, his vision. Um, what he did last year, he went for about 1,000 yards, 16 touchdowns. That really only happened in seven games. He didn't play much in the first five games. And you probably picked up on this today, guys. It, it could be third and nine. And we're running the inside zone with him. Uh, we had third and goal on the nine in the first half. Gave it to him. You know, they're thinking we're going to pass touchdown we had third and nine uh, late here in the game a couple times gave it to him touchdown he he's a special player very proud of him coach on, I only a quick question Richard Baldinger here the most hey, important Rich. question yeah. who's buying the pizza tonight for that offensive line oh it's it's all me and you, you probably noticed them rich those guys you can tell they like some pizza we got a couple big boys up there uh, they played solid uh, really proud of the quarterback guys this is first football game college football mm -hmm. game and Very good. you got I think you guys picked up on it in the first day he was changing a lot of protections changing a lot of plays two of Lowry's touchdowns today he checked out of a pass play into a run play when he saw the outside pressure coming. Uh, uh, the kid, phenomenal performance. And then the guy at the end, Tim Ward, true freshman, uh, joined us in January, uh, tipping that pass and then picking it off. That's a future star for us. So really excited to get the win, guys. Yeah, congratulations, Coach. Go celebrate with your team. You so got it. For Rich Balding. Thank you, guys. I'm Dave Armstrong. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to americansportsnet.com. This has been a presentation of ASN, the American Sports Network. Your teams, your passion, your network.